All right, here we go. Let us begin. Let it begin. Okay. If the stream gods be with us, then we be godding, by which I mean streaming. Hi, Adam. Hello, in the 905th year, in the third month on the 17th day, Lotharingia still exists, and it was weird. <laughs> so you were saying before we started recording that Lotharingia <laughs> ought not to be a thing, certainly not at the level of success it is currently displaying at this, at this point in history? Yeah, sure. Historically, right, uh, Charlemagne divided his empire into West Francia, Lotharingia, and East Francia, and Lotharingia was sandwiched north-south in between these two uh, much more territorially, like, geographically tenable uh, polities and just got gobbled up, like, first generation and ceased to exist other than as a title. Yeesh. Um, so for Lotharingia to have instead absorbed East Francia and some of we its are, we are. Uh, constituent kingdoms is unusual, to say the least. Yeah, to be sure. Hmm. Hmm. I'm also interested in a nearly unified Ireland. Oh, uh, that is interesting. Neath has most of, of that island. Uh, only two foreign uh, holders, Denmark and Wessex, north and south. Ossery is local, uh, but uh, just separate from, from me. And then Alba, which is the uh, Celtic name for Scotland, is uh, doing surprisingly well. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it eventually fold to Wessex or Mercia, probably Wessex the way this is going, uh, since those territories are just simply not as um, populous or profitable, but uh, just geographically it's doing particularly well. Well, thank you for all of that. Here's the level I'm operating at. I looked at Mercia and for a moment thought, America? That's... <laughs> well, okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's not... Uh, a a wild misreading, especially since uh, you know unfamiliar words uh, in this game have tended to involve reading letters in the wrong order for it's you. True. It's, it's true. It's not out of the blue. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just <laughs> I was contrasting your knowledge of the abnormality of the map with mine. Uh, there's a gap there. So we seem to be live everywhere but YouTube, which is curious because YouTube has been the one we've not had a problem with before. So I'm going to yes. fiddle with that. Um, we will post for anybody happening by, uh, I see you on Periscope. Who are you on Periscope? Hello. Um, we will post the full uninterrupted stream uh, on the YouTube channel later, regardless of uh, anything else. But for the moment, I'm going to see if I can get us live every which where. Uh, so you will see us, I uh, you know, counterintuitively, not be live for a moment. Cheers. <laughs> Prost. Uh, I did the thing where I chilled a glass so I wouldn't have ice in it, and then I... <laughs> clanked it into my other glass <laughs> it adds flavor <sighs> well you're very kind to say so <laughs> all right we're opening up our dashboard here every day hundreds thousands a functional infinity of people just stream and it just it ain't no thing <laughs> meanwhile <laughs> in this corner of the internet I wonder if there's a self-selection process at play, though, right? Like, those who continue to stream are those who do not run into problems as frequently. That's almost certainly true, yeah. Which then makes you sort of heroically persistent. <laughs> I, it, this... it is I, the Sisyphus of streaming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But we didn't like that uh, joke. Well, you know, he's got a lot of growing up to do. <laughs> he can't appreciate the classics. <laughs> oh, man. Man, watching the Periscope numbers, the Periscope numbers is kind of wild because it is just like, you know, ships passing in the night. <laughs> right. So <just> quick. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> oh, man. Drive-bys. I, um... I guess I did miss one, actually. The Oglobid, um Kingdom, I mm. guess. M Malekit, I suppose. More. Anyway. Um... <laughs> hmm. Hmm? Nani? Oh, I was trying to save it until we were on the air. Okay. Uh, and I just vocalized while thinking. <laughs> Hmm. My brain hmm. only has one thread. Because you are nothing if not a Dark Souls character. <laughs> uh, 
I say that as a Dark Souls character myself. Some of my best friends are Dark Souls characters. No, <laughs> no ill I, intent. I am definitely a Sigmire, and if anybody tries to call me a Sig word, uh, <laughs> I will de- slowly devise a very potent plan uh, <laughs> to put them in their place. Truly, the lesser son of greater sires. <laughs> <clears throat> okay so uh all right so now we're definitely live on youtube is twitch gonna work too do we have the full house big money big money no whammies i feel like that invites whammies though yeah yeah i shouldn't really say that i shouldn't put whammies out there as a possibility <laughs> yeah it's 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 like naming the bear you know <laughs> sure yeah definitely well, it's sending data. It's not saying no. It's just not precisely saying yes either. Are we being ghosted? Is that what's happening? Oh no. <laughs> ghosted by Twitch. It sounds like a Chuck Tangle thing. I mean, kind of, but no. also like it would definitely be much more active and descriptive. In that sure, you're right. Yeah, ghosting doesn't happen in those books. <laughs> things <laughs> things occur. <laughs> Well, and especially not in those titles. Sure, like, sure. Like, you know. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. No one shows up for a ghosting, so <laughs> Chuck wouldn't bury the lead. Okay, I think we're online everywhere that one can be online. Um, okay. And some places one can't. How does that work? Ask me another time. Uh, you know, you, you get far enough into Shin Megami Tensei uh, <laughs> fandom and then mysterious things just start to happen at the periphery of reality. And if you know what's good for you, you ignore them. Oh, and hey, in the chat, is that, uh, is that Lucas, a uh, longtime podcast supporter? If so, then hello. Thank you for Great. watching. I'm glad I'm glad we caught you. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Blink twice and or say something in Twitch chat. <laughs> there you go. Indeed it is. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> now, if he had blinked twice... How would we have known? That's a really good point. I told I I've been trying to tell you I'm not good at that at streaming, but you seem to not be hearing me on that point. <laughs> See, I was thinking I was actually taking that to mean that this was all a front and that you were actually very technically sound <laughs> enough so that you had personal surveillance of uh, you know, watchers and acquaintances. Oh, nine eight nine eighteen in the morning in Australia. So this is this is like a, a not especially terrible time for streaming, assuming it doesn't conflict with yeah. anything work related. That's that's good to know. Well, I imagine Australia probably doesn't have President's Day, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Since they don't have uh, presidents, that maybe. would make sense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would be weirder if they did have President's Day, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the thing I was camping out on is is that uh, in one of, in my, my overview of things that were maybe a little unusual, um, the Umayyad uh, Caliphate, uh, and its, or rather its successors, uh, having broken up a little bit further, including a um, Orthodox Christian kingdom in Tunisia and environment environs extending into Sicily, the oh wow Uglabids uh, are surprisingly robust for their um, relatively uh, what's the word I'm looking for here um, insecure location. Uh, all of their neighbors. Uh, in North Africa have basically permanent cause of spell eye on them, but they seem to be doing pretty well. Wow. Go get some. By the way, Lucas, sorry you have to work. Hope we can take the edge off a little. <laughs> but yeah, we were we were noting uh, anomalies is the wrong word. Unusual elements on the map. Because while we've been sort of off in our own little while, well, you've been making Finland a mighty world power, and while I've been playing in the kiddie pool uh, <laughs> down, uh, <laughs> down in the Tikvin environs, uh, the whole I world has like been taken away out. by the nature of the game. So as such, you know, an unusually unified Ireland, you pointed out. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's some things that are that are not normal. Uh, we pointed something else yeah. out too. What was it? It was uh, Lotharingia. Lotharingia. The... That's right. Um. What was the name of it? Uh, the Tahirid uh, mm-hmm. in Persia. Um, Kazaria and the Kyrgyz Khanate are not particularly unusual, but they are pretty cohesive at the moment. Sure. Um, Greater Moravia or Great Moravia and Bavaria are both quite big, uh, and then the Oglobids. I successfully um, got you calling it Greater Moravia. I'm I'm very happy about that. <laughs> greatest um, Moravia. Greatest, most great <laughs> goat Moravia. Um, oh no! I'm what sorry. have I done? <laughs> I was going to point out that yes, I have a fair bit of territory and I'm an independent ruler. However, <clears throat> you uh, 
have more troops to call upon than I do. So mm. before we go on, call it, go around calling Finland a, uh, a world power here. Uh, we need to qualify what that means. That's perfectly fair. You did also fight a war, you know, moments ago in, in historical terms. So you're, you know, you're not uh, at the, so. you're not at the height of your reserve powers right at the moment. Sure. My maximum levies is on par with yours. Okay. Uh, once I have all the way reinforced. But Sweden should hopefully be my next point of um, aggression, I guess. Maybe Karelia, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try to expand to fill Finland, which will put me in uh, conflict with Bjarmia, Karelia, and then if I want uh, to get the empire that I'm part of, which is Scandinavia, uh, then I will also have to eventually target all of de jure Sapmi, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Uh, so I'm constantly oh, stunned by the sure. amount of barrier you're dealing with. By the way, that is just like useless and hospitable taiga. <laughs> it's remarkable. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, the interior of Finland is kind of amazingly unlivable <laughs> in this era. Uh, but I did miss a kingdom in mm. my rundown of uh, de jure Scandinavian territory. Would you like to guess which one it is? uh scandinavia <laughs> well so scandinavia is the empire okay okay uh, and it's made up of kingdoms uh one two three four five six kingdoms this is not one of those deals where there are self same names at lower levels okay uh i revised my Indeed guess not. let's see so i had named finland sapmi norway sweden and denmark there's one other kingdom that i did not yet name oh would that be the kingdom uh, of estonia <laughs> that would be the kingdom of estonia as in the kingdom i'm a part of okay Yes, yeah, although yeah. not de jure a part of. They right, not, right. Uh, they are starting to uh, incorporate parts of your territory de jure and parts of Lithuania de jure, but um, it's like another 94 years <laughs> before that actually happens. So. <laughs> sure. So here's me for those who just tuning in or who could use a refresher. Uh, Helgi the Seer. Uh, I'm a witch, but I'm not, <laughs> but I'm not a Jarl. Uh, and let's see, the King of Estonia, King Nalka. Uh, is uh, is looking looking a little long in the tooth, looking a little like he like he's been beaten back in some recent conflicts. But but this this is exactly where our two paths may meet. I think is over the territory that I'm a part of and that you you would like to Borg. Eventually, yeah. Uh, he has quite a lot more troops than I do. But once he dies, uh, he does have at least two adult sons, three. Uh, who will split his territory. One will get the kingdom of Novgorod, of which you will remain a part. Mm -hmm. One will get the kingdom of Estonia, uh, which will be much smaller. Um, and then presumably one will become a Jarl of some of the territory in those kingdoms. And um, I can maybe attack his successor more successfully. And then once uh, the kingdom of Novgorod splits off, uh, you will probably be a relatively predominant uh, power in it. Um, you hold a lot of the Novgorodian territory. Uh, hmm. As the bard wrote, Mwahaha. The uh, Peskov and your immediate liege, High Chieftess Virga, uh, do hold probably between them about as much as you do, uh, just territory-wise. I don't know how developed it is or how your stats will stack up. But... Sure. Well, with all that being said, shall we progress the clock? Uh, well, why don't uh, you pull me up first real quick so that I can... Oh, yeah, good call. On this Let's do that. I was actually... I had you up while you were talking about your, your situation. Uh, yes, but yes, by all means, please do introduce okay. your... Yeah, the, not the best beard you've had this playthrough, no. but still quite good. It's okay. Uh, so I'm King Petri of Finland, and what you're maybe Petri of Finland, I'm not sure. Uh, what you can't see on Drew's screen is, is that I am at stress level one. Uh, and not going anywhere soon. <laughs> uh, so I may be having some mental breaks in my future. But uh, yeah, this is uh, my extremely boring, ordinary, normal 38-year-old king, uh, <laughs> who is just weathered two invasions uh, from Estonia and Gwoladat, uh, respectively, uh, and is looking to lick his wounds a little bit before we uh, start expanding our territory in de jure sweden of which we already have a little but less than i'd like yes so. and when you say you're boring i think i assume part of what you mean is that your wife is not even sleeping with your son uh which but not even no. which mine uh, for the record uh is 
<laughs> so <laughs> yeah no well my last king was possessed and <laughs> that wasn't um, boring at all <laughs> improvident and yeah this guy is just fickle generous ambitious astute intellectual aspiring blade master he's fine truly tr- is good sometimes. truly the joe biden of 10th century finland uh we just mm. need a little st- <laughs> ow <laughs> Oof. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. King you... Patriot is going to go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you want some, you want some ointment for that burn? Uh, okay. So, uh, all right. Shall we? Oh yes. Okay. Uh, let us, I feel like I should also point out, uh, I, I did name, um, the former, uh, County. Mm. Oh boy. I don't even remember what it was originally called. Uh, here on uh, sort of um, the interior there, I named it to uh, Juanulu uh, because my wife wanted uh, a territory named after her. So uh, I have named a territory. After I believe it was it was actually it was actually a, a friend pretending to like under the guise of a persona, insisting that you name a territory after your wife. There are, there are narrative <laughs> layers to this, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, eventually it may become my capital. That is my intention for it. But at the moment it is a little underdeveloped. So I have not yet my capital, but I might. Good stuff. All right. The stage is set. Let our play in multiple senses of the word begin. Indeed. (laughs) Who wants to be an emperor? (laughs) Ooh, ooh, ooh. Me, 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 me. (laughs) I have good news and I have bad news. Can I phone a finish king? <laughs> Always. I don't know if you saw Johan in the chat show. saying, yes. Okay. On to your secret being exposed. Uh, I, I do not have the chat up. I, I am uh, afraid to have your Discord stream in real time and the mm, that's YouTube fair. stream that's fair. taxing my internet simultaneously. I'll keep you appraised and apprised because we actually have chats coming in from Twitch and YouTube and every which way. So please oh, tell me about secrets being exposed. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I cannot see your chats, so I am not ignoring you. Drew will apparently uh, do his best to keep me apprised. So I gotcha. if you have any complaints, direct them to him. Uh, <laughs> a shameful truth has reached the light of day. My vassal, Chieftain Urho, has an affair with his lover, Lamiki. A great name. Great I name. do not see what the fuss is about. It is not as if lust is an unnatural affliction. Have we nothing more important to attend to? Um, this makes me want to go look at my religion. Um, yeah. How, how bad is that from a, from an in-game morality perspective? Ah, uh, male adultery is accepted female. Oh no. Female adultery is accepted as well. Sorry. I was misreading it. Um, they're just two, they're just two separate stuff. things, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and deviancy is shunned. So I just transpose the, gotcha, the gotcha, nearby gotcha. category when I was looking at it. So uh, yeah, no. Uh, crime doctrines, uh, same-sex relations are shunned, but not criminal. Uh, male adultery, female adultery, and witchcraft are accepted. Deviancy is shunned. So very little is, like, against the law. Sure. <laughs> uh, killing your close relatives is a crime. Uh, and that's about it. Divorce is always allowed. We can marry your cousins. Um Pretty, pretty permissive up here, I guess. There are very few of those that have no chance of coming up. Um, okay, so so what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about this uh, this little affair in your court? Sorry, no, that last line about I don't see what the big deal is. Oh, that was what you picked. I had gotcha. to yeah, that was that was the Got the accept and move on with my life. Understood. There was there was no be a boring Puritan about it button. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Okay, cool. Uh, well, now there were hurt feelings, but they didn't affect me. It was sure. just you know the spouses of the people involved. Yeah, I love that. That was just that was the canonical choice. Was can can we please just get to infrastructure week? Like, who cares about this? Right. Yeah, it, this is Finland. It's always infrastructure week. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, Lucas. And yeah, good to go whenever you are. Yep, yep. I'm pausing. All right. I still have a peasant uprising that's going to... No, I crushed the peasant uprising. There might be another one coming, though. I just... I I have a feeling. Well, this is actually kind of confusing. I'm looking at it now, and both Olu and Joanulu are realm capital... (laughs) Oh, that's interesting. How does that work? I don't know. <laughs> I I wish I did. But I don't. Spe-
spouse up to the task. I'm going to pause real quick here. Some of my counselors believe the job is theirs by right of blood or influence alone. How wrong they are. I expect results, yet I am often disappointed. After a long day, I'm complaining to Pribyshek, which I'm sure I pronounced wrong again. When she interrupts me, let me do something about it. It was rightish. Uh, let me do something about it, husband. A few lessons might sharpen their wits. Now, my wife is smarter and generally better at stuff than I am, so this is not a terrible idea. Um, remind me what she's good at, though, especially. Her marshal's good. Her learning is good. Everything else is fine. Or, or poor to okay. Um... None of these really play to her strength, actually. Hmm. <laughs> She's volunteering for stuff that is not especially her wheelhouse. Oh, and I'm going to insult whoever I get to be tutored by my wife. Will. Oh, uh, I see. So oh, you, okay. you already hate my guts. Moderately. You love me. My spy master, eh, I kind of want my spy master to not like me any less, especially with the actual, the remaining secret. For, for those who were not here last time, my spy master informed me that my wife and son were sleeping with each other twice from both directions, from the, the, the your son is cheating and your wife, is, both of those, but still does not know just how many witches are in this family, which is a lot of witches. <laughs> So, which is uh, a lot of which is is got to be an album title. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um or I oh, or, or I can make this like a like a like a reconciliation moment between the two of us. Since none of these play to her strengths, let's just go ahead and do that. God knows if this may, if we're both stuck in this marriage, we may as well try to try to like each other a bit. Uh okay. <laughs> you can try. That's the role play decision. This, the, like, whatever, whatever I lack, uh, or whatever her chieftain Helgi lacks, he does not lack radical hope. Um, he may not expect things to go well, but he he never lets go of the possibility. And Lucas says, "Too many witches spoil the cauldron." I have found that to be true, but maybe I've just been working with the wrong witches. Uh, okay, shall we? We shall. All right. Too many witches. A too many cooks thing. That was that was. Okay. See, this is this is me having never actually watched too many cooks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lovers pox. Cool. Oh well. So I laid I laid with my wife after that last event, and now now we're in the lovers pox oops. situation. Oops. Oops. This doesn't <laughs> bode super well for my heir, who she is also sleeping with. <laughs> oh, for the love of. I like the idea of you keeping this. Uh... This, this case of an STI entirely within your immediate family. I mean, there's the, the family that something stays together. I'm going to start time again. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, I just I'm going to start time. Again. I don't need to finish that thought. I need to let time finish that thought. <laughs> maybe maybe one day we'll all just we'll all die. <laughs> uh oh. What happened? Ill my mortal body oh no which makes it sound like i don't think everybody's got one of those <laughs> king or peasant high or low it does not matter in the end we are all mortals i was reminded of this as i woke coughing in the early morning hours a dull ache pounding through my head and throat you seem to be under the weather my lord i know a fair number of suitable remedies says my court physician who does not know anything about medicine <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why he, they, they know a fair number of remedies but they include i mean i i was cured once by a jolly song like an especially good tenor sang me back to health so i don't know who knows yeah no i think the the implication in a lot of the stuff in crusader kings 2 and 3 that makes you better is that it is kind of coincidental sure sure <laughs> um, the the actual help may not be coming from the uh, prescribed remedy. Your, your pancreas was cured by the jaunty scent of mountain sage. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have him do no more than what is necessary since it does not seem to be a particularly severe illness and I'm not on my deathbed. I'm not 70. So okay. Let's see how this goes. Okay. A little brighter. The steam Ooh. rose from the cup as Arvo stirred the green powder in it. He explained the healing properties of the herb at length before motioning for me to drink it. The root is in there too, he boastfully revealed. The bitter herb turned out to be just what I needed. 
For now, the worst of my symptoms are alleviated, and the world seems a little brighter. I was not that so far off with the stupid mountain article. sage comment. <laughs> or placebo, says Lucas. Yeah, that is uh, kind of yeah. kind of where we're at, yeah. But yeah, yeah think... a huge boost in health from disease resistance. <laughs> because so... you felt like you made the right decision, and sometimes that's yeah. all that matters. Well, and again... I didn't get my face cut off, so... Yeah, no, that's solid. <laughs> that's always... It's for the I, best when one keeps one's face. I will always be bringing that one up. <laughs> that was They're, an extremely yeah. memorable ruler. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I remembered my old English a little bit better because I could extemporize a... Uh, that was a faceless king. <laughs> but... <laughs> Was was that also a good king? Because they're not mutually exclusive, uh, I guess. Reasonably good, but that was perhaps not the most salient uh, point. Sure. The facelessness didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> the faceless old Scotsman who secretly lives in your castle. <laughs> well, it's probably time for me to start thinking about another war. Oh, my liege just went to war. Huh. Against, against High Chieftain uh, the II of Corland. Corland. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have a decent chance of having a new uh, liege um, brother, I guess. <laughs> uh, sister, maybe. No. I'm not being asked to do much about it at present. Yeah. Uh, so we'll probably well, just see how this um, plays out. Brother, for the record, I think. Yeah. Uh, King Nalka has... 4,600 troops, and he's fighting somebody who has uh, 545 troops. So, I think probably Corland is going to become part of Estonia here. I have been overwhelmed by stress. Pause while I figure that out. Uh, oh, my lover died. Of late, my courtiers seem to avoid me at all costs. Uh... I hear whispers that they think I will stop at nothing to achieve my ambitions, that nothing is sacred to me, but that just means that I rule with a firm hand. Doesn't mean that I'm a monster, does it? Maybe a new cloak would make me feel better. I gain the trait profligate, which <laughs> reduces my monthly income by 10%. Oh uh, God, you're I you're having like a really afford. you're having a later than midlife crisis, and you bought a freaking cloak. Yeah, well, and so profligate would not be the worst of it. The problem that I really have is is that it only reduces my stress by 35, and my stress is over 200 now. Uh, but it also costs me 100 treasure and 150 prestige uh, to do. Gold and silver will buy me love, also 35 stress. I only lose the 100 gold. Uh, I gain the trait Improvident, which um, gives me a minus 15% hit to my monthly income. And the Chieftain of Ululu gains Influx of Eager Beggars. Beggars line the streets of many settlements here, eager for coin, Shh. which hurts popular opinion and holding taxes. Yeah, that's not great. Or I can just eat it and get another 44 stress, which would bring my stress. <clears throat> Let's see to 265 Ooh, so is that is there a point at which your stress simply kills you uh well at the moment it's inflicting a, a severe penalty on me okay uh health wise so the short answer is kind of um okay. boy i guess i'll ugh. I guess I'll be profligate. <laughs> um, and guess, I guess I'll profligate. Prestige. Yeah. So now I'm back down at stress level one with only 186 stress, and I can no longer afford the feast that I was going to throw in order to help my stress level. <laughs> <laughs> but plus side, that's a very nice cloak. Why? Why? Thank you. I, I wasn't even looking at my portrait. I wonder if it actually has a new cloak in it. I was just thinking that. <laughs> uh, well, I'm still sick, actually, so I'm not back in my normal. Oh, okay. Outfit, but I am wearing quite a nice cape. Uh, whether that is related or not, I couldn't say. That is a really nice uh, cape. Were you wearing that earlier? The stream will tell, but I don't think you were. Maybe it's just more prominent because you're wearing like a, you know, a bed shirt or a house shirt. Right. Yeah. That's my thinking is, is that it may just be more prominent. Um, 
Okay. I do like the implication that you wore your fancy cape to your sick bed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what? I. Why would I? Why would I take it off? <laughs> it's part of it's part of the treatment, my leash. Yeah. It's, no, just because I'm in bed doesn't mean I can't look fly. <laughs> um, one cannot recover if one is not buttery. I am going to visit now that I'm profligate. I can visit the market. Something new, something shiny, something rare. Nothing centers me like a new purchase. And the local market holds many treasures. I will lose fifty gold, but I will gain. I will lose some stress as well. Uh, and since I can no longer afford the feast I was going to throw. Yeah, no, I mean, retail uh, therapy it is. Retail therapy it is. Stress coping, the price we pay. I walk through the market in Oulu, giddy with excitement. Fabrics, jewels, thread, and trinkets. I want it all. I end up at a stall attended by an old man who is very understanding of my predicament and promises to help me choose. And my my choice here is... Lose 50 gold, lose 24 stress, and it says two of that. No, wait, three. <laughs> well, the good news is, is that my levies are relatively close to being reinforced, so Karelia may or may not remain independent for long. Plus, you're helping okay, the economy. <laughs> yeah. I'm boosting my capital's economy. The thing is, I don't think my air is actually going to be a ton better than my current king. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. He's shy. Ooh. What does that do? Oh, I don't have the trade no. in front of me. Uh, well, so it's diplomacy minus two, learning plus one, and then, you know, just a couple of uh, opinion modifiers. But it also affects what stresses you out. Mm -hmm. Like, like how I'm, I'm greedy, so anytime I have to give money away or gift anything it increases my stress uh -huh. and so yeah this guy is going to be maybe not amazingly well suited to ruling <laughs> suppose we'll see time will tell new temples established excellent oh well i had something pop up and then it just disappeared on its own before i could read it that i'm sure nothing will come of that it's probably fine a couple things going on here an unworthy challenge. At first, I thought the simple footman a fool for stepping out of the training field. Oh, boy. However, the battle proved more hard fought than I expected, and it gradually became clear that he would be unable to stop his wild and vicious strikes from hurting me. Disarming him suddenly came, became a matter of life and death. I tried not to show my relief when his sword finally hit the ground. So I can invite him to be a champion, I assume. Or just, in, just invite him to court. Yeah, which um, he can then serve as a champion. Yeah. Courtiers can. Or I can gain some piety and some glory by uh, <laughs> giving an arch undeserved lecture on honor. Uh, or I can kill him um, and gain 28 dread. I, I mean, honestly, my court sucks. So let's see. I mean, his stats that are not it. great. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Well, he's got a lot of prowess, which mm -hmm. is what counts for a champion. 19 is pretty high. Sure. So if you wanted him as a champion, that would be the thing that you were getting him for. Yeah, that's a good call. But if you decide that you want prestige more, you know, that's also an option. Yeah. Eh, join the court. You're an interesting person. Okay, now <laughs> my daughter is of, uh, of marriageable age, so who's she going to marry? Man, I'm realizing how much my vassals dislike me. <laughs> and there's, there's kind of a lot. Speaking of kind of a lot, there's some lovers pox around and about my course. <laughs> oh uh, man. It's all beans. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Uh. All right. Well, I am <clears throat> taking the opportunity to figure out if I want to try to declare a war. You probably do, just knowing how this game works. 
Well, it's more like, is it the right time? I'm pretty sure, close sure. to reinforced. And I can probably bully either Ostergotland or Karelia. Probably Karelia. I want to focus mainly on my de jure borders, I suppose. Yarmia is a quandary because attacking it now before it gets any bigger is tempting. But it also is going to be a tougher nut to crack. Sure. Hmm. Spoken like an onion knight. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the sad thing is, is that I know because of the way the internet works and lag, that won't come through in sync. No, it won't. And that's sad. That is sad. Because it was pretty well synchronized. <laughs> You've you've disappointed us again in streaming technology. Yeah, I imagine that my locale will not be <clears throat> getting fiber optic internet at an affordable level at any time soon. Remarkably, I have much better fiber optic internet where we currently are in the in the woods of Rhode Island <laughs> than we ever did in Manhattan. Like an order of magnitude better. That actually makes a lot of sense though. Yeah. Like <laughs> I don't know if it's in a way that I could explain verbally, but that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, no, it's that, it's that combination of like somewhat low population density and then income level and this and that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think I am going to declare war on Biarmia and just hope that nothing goes wrong. Yeah, we live once. Oh, actually, you know what? I am actually going to hold off. I'm going to see if I can't get... I didn't realize how close I was to the necessary level of prestige to subjugate another ruler. Mm -hmm. So if I could subjugate the army, that would be That's much better amazing. than just sniping one title or one little bit of territory, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it would let me, like, take a little extra territory that I could then use to maybe, like, you know, oh, you don't like me very much? Cool. Well, be independent over here that without, you know, sacrificing territory I needed to keep so I just gotta be crafty I am mystified by how many troops King Nalka of Estonia can call up because he does not have very good marshal I mean I guess you're a marshal right you're somebody's marshal I am. I am my, my immediate lieges marshal. Hmm. I guess maybe she's providing him with a lot of those levies, especially if she's his marshal. I don't know. I, I don't think I can see any of that stuff, but like... Yeah, levy, yeah. levy size... I mean, her levy size is 10% larger because of me, so... Uh -huh. That presumably could scale up. Yeah, I just, you know, your your levy size can be affected by, I guess, a lot of things. And I'm just like, man, why does he have 4,500 troops? Yeah. I mean, her marshal is fairly excellent. She's 21. Yeah. So maybe she's given him a boost. Um, Her being, her being my liege, uh, if that wasn't clear. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, what are you working on? Oh, Lucas says we're not capturing the screen. That seems like a significant problem. Um, <laughs> thank you for letting us know. Um, I know we were. So hmm. let me see what's up. Yeah. I'm del I'm honored, honestly, that you've just been listening to us talk without seeing a game, and that's been you've been making a meal of that. <laughs> However, um, oh, this could be that problem we were happening on that we were happen uh, having on Twitch before. Hang on. Hopefully it is something easy to identify. I will actually take this opportunity while you are troubleshooting to refresh my libation. That sounds good. Uh, libate. Return. Well, now it's uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I meant what I said. I 
every time, every time I think I got this thing going. So Lucas, you can hear us, but you can't see. <laughs> Thank you for your politeness. You haven't tried it because it worked. And again, you're listening to us talk, so it's not a total loss. But you can hear us, but you can't see us. That is super strange. Anyway, we're ma- that's so strange. Okay. Anyway, we're making your workday better. I'm glad of that. But you should be able to see us. That seems important. So, hang on while I try a couple things. Well, Lucas, if you have access to YouTube, then that is definitely working. Um, But nonetheless, thank you for letting me know because there's no reason Twitch shouldn't be working. Lucas, if you have access to YouTube, then that is definitely working. Do we have Uh, an idea of what's happening? Is it working? It's always on mobile. Hmm. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's experiencing this as a live streamed podcast, which is, you know, like not the worst thing. Um, there's a direct link to YouTube. No, it's not. So I'll troubleshoot this as we go. Um, okay. That's so like, we've had an issue before where it just wasn't coming through on Twitch. This idea that the audio is coming through, but the video isn't, that's, that's new. (laughs) That's definitely (laughs) strange. Um, I, there's something kind of enjoyable about the idea of like this being a radio play version of Crusader Kings (laughs) three, but again, that's not really what we're (laughs) attempting to give people this sword that i have in my right hand is shop (laughs) i could have been fred newman i could have been just like a foley man doing cool sound effects off in the corner i I feel like that would be like a really fun job (laughs) not everybody gets to make doug but you know the fact that that job still exists does make the world a better place in my in my humble opinion yeah i uh I don't know how helpful to you this will be, but Luki, your um, southern neighbor mm-hmm. uh, ruled by an offshoot of your house, I believe, um, is currently split in half by a rebellion. Oh. So if you wanted to make a move for reclaiming the uh, territory you once held... Uh, you could do worse, methinks. That's an awfully good uh, call. Than pick this moment to invade Luki. Minsk is growing. Okay, let's see. I could subjugate, I just don't have the... If I'd killed that guy, I'd have enough prestige. <sighs> mm. uh, do you have other cost of spell eye that will work? Uh, what are your claims? Or it's not your claims, it's... Well, we could do claims. my claims or Rurik Rurik's claims. Yeah, I would do your claims so that you actually gain the title. But, that makes sense. You know. uh, is Rurik your heir? Because then it might make some sense. No, just my champion. Okay. Well, in that case, yeah. If it was your heir, then. But you know. Sure. Um, and that would get you what the county of. Oh no! You're looking at the territory of. I am. Oh, uh, that's true. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, I was unclear. I was talking about the Jarldom of Luki. Aha. Uh, the territory of Luki is part of Minsk, which is a bigger. Thing. Understood. Granted, yes, yes, yes. Minsk, I think Luki. You probably want to take at some point but right a different thing uh, a tougher nut to crack certainly with 2,000 troops as opposed to 75 this is the area ruled by my nephew that is right mm-hmm. you do seem to have some claims on it though so. I do oh yeah you could uh, just claim the Jarldom in one fell swoop well yeah let's and do that and that would put you on par with your immediate liege Chief Tisveria so you may actually get out from under her thumb although you'd probably still be part of this uh, Kingdom of Estonia, uh, you would be a direct liege, a uh, direct vassal to King Nalka and a peer to Chief Tisverga. Oh, 
uh, if you manage to take that title. I this is think. a good plan. All right, let's do try not it. do not send angry letters uh, to Finland if it doesn't work <laughs> that way. <laughs> hey, look, you've lured me into less well considered military <laughs> escapades in the past, so it's okay. <laughs> Well, you know, when especially when you were Rurik himself, um, it really only took like a bottle of grog to lure you anywhere. So. I'm not saying he took a lot of convincing, or or that I in his person did. Uh, the fact remains. Uh, yeah, Lucas, very happy to be part of your streaming diet. Thanks for rolling with the with the punches, and welcome to the YouTube stream. Hopefully, this is working better for you. Um, I'm going to declare this war. Sure. Yeah, very very happy to have you. Oh yeah, and, and wow, to, for us to be included in the same lineup as one of the Vlambeer. Folks, that's it's a, it's an honor. It's an honor, I tells you. Uh, okay, I'm declaring this war. My tribal Finnish kingdom takes honor very seriously, so when I say it's an honor. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know that we do not say that lightly. I'm such a dweeb, which is, I guess, why I am streaming Crusader Kings three. <laughs> um, <laughs> you think you're a dweeb? You know what sentence I was literally about to say? This goblet is very loud <laughs> when I put it down. <laughs> Uh, uh, the funny thing is that um, my seventh graders uh, break along uh, a very predictable divide. The 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 weebs or proto weebs in my seventh grade class all think I'm pretty cool for a teacher and like ask me for anime recommendations, which I then <laughs> usually just say, I don't know just look around uh <laughs> but um then the uh the sports ball players uh are all like they take me at my word when i say i'm a dork uh they don't they don't require specificity nor do they nor would they maybe yeah. understand the differentiation should it should it pop up <laughs> they're just like yeah nope he, that checks out it says he's a dork he's a dork cool he's a teacher moving on yeah, what are you like, sixty-five and a teacher? Yeah, yeah, probably, probably some kind of dork. If you're, if you're over nineteen, you're sixty-five, I think, to certain oh, certain sure, students. Yeah, yeah. to twelve-year-olds for sure. All right, how ready are you to unpause? Uh, I think pretty ready. My armies are raising. The war is on. Let's do let's it. Slip the hounds of war. <laughs> I shall let yeah. slip them. Whenever uh, our dog Pixel wants to go out, we, we in a Pixel voice, which of course we have because we're dorks, uh, says, you know, she says, let slip the me. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> All right, so the marriage is going ahead. That's fine. I was like, there was, I, I gladly accept your proposal and then, you know, excellent uh, was not what I expected having just started a war. So, ooh, right. enemy allies did join the war. So we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, presumably you got a readout on how many troops to expect there. Yes. Um, while you were declaring the war so yeah i did and i believe that we are allied so if we you are. need my 2700 they are at your disposal for a modicum of prestige spent calling me in if things begin to go pear-shaped i will certainly let you know yeah in the meantime ill my old self as i woke this morning and saw rays of sunshine falling through my window it took me a moment to realize i had slept soundly for the first time in weeks i did not wake up coughing once I am glad to be well again. I lost the trait ill. Mazel tov. <clears throat> and I'm going to keep us paused while I find a guardian for this daughter of mine, who I guess is just cursed because <laughs> her guardians keep dying. Okay, I definitely thought cursed was a trait that existed in this game when you first said that. You know, I can't say for sure that it's not. <laughs> but I feel like is, I feel like I mean, if it were, I would have seen the monster factory guys put it on there as they piled every possible trait. I don't know if you watched that video, but uh I have not. I'm, I'm behind on Monster Factory by a while. Yeah, they did Crusader King three. They created a ruler and gave gave this poor kid who was just you know started at age zero and just gave him you know thirty traits or something. So oh, God. he was basically dying from day one. <laughs> but, right. I uh, yeah. I tend to let things like that uh, build up a good long while and then catch up in a grading spree. That's fair. Uh, That's fair. So I have not uh, have not kept current on Monster. I believe there will okay. be a Crusader Kings three sequel where they they make someone who will hopefully be longer lived than I think it was three months. <laughs> this. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, pausing. Yeah. No. It, you can definitely make a a very 
very frail little monster. Mm -hmm. Just need some events to give me a little bit of prestige, and then I'll be ready to take the army in one fell swoop. Yeah, I'm hoping to make this quick. It's my Where's best my shot. RNG at? My King's War is going better than I expected. Well, uh, I guess that could be good or bad, depending on your perspective. But <laughs> it might be a wash. Congratulations yeah. to him either way. Yeah, I was, either, I was sort of neither celebrating nor bemoaning. I was just... Uh... Now, this is interesting. The army is fleeing the capital. The army of... Uh... Oh, yeah, because they can't, can't possibly... <laughs> um... Uh, defeat you and your garrison in Novgorod is big enough that that army by itself won't be able to siege it. Right. So unless they meet up with some allies, I think you're pretty safe. Uh, I glanced over to our west and Denmark is making inroads into Sweden. Hmm. Can't have that. Actually, into Norway. Didn't realize Norway came quite so far down the coast there. Unlocking the organized march perk, which might be handy. Oh, I should have gotten the gallant trait. I thought I already had it. Oh, well, well, next time. Silly of me. Well, yeah, these things happen. Why am I not besieging? There's no city to be siege. How does this work? You may be in the wrong... Yeah, you're in the wrong part of the county. You better believe uh, I the am. The baronies are divided on the map in this game in a way uh -huh. that are not in Crusader Kings 2. That is what was messing me up. And that will matter when we're not tribal anymore. Each barony will have its own little seat sure. that you can siege. And in fact, if there's more than one castle in a county, you will have to siege both. Or all. But... Right. Okay, King, we're sieging. King Nalka already won. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, <laughs> through no, through no, uh, good grace of my own, I, I'm back on the right horse, I guess. So this Who's appears to way? be a hostile army coming at me. And I'm um, a little worried that, I mean, currently I can meet them no problem, but by the time the siege is over, tougher to say. Well, let's see. Check and see how long your siege is going to last. Seven months, let's looks pause. like. And then check how long how their siege is going to last. Oh, well, they're not besieging me. They're just... Well, they are, yeah. They are yeah. eight months. Okay. So they might successfully siege Tekvin, but I think you will be able to... Because once you're back in your territory, you're reinforcing. Right, true. And you have a higher quality army than they do. Uh, they're also going to be losing people at the same rate you are, or the same percentage rate you are, if not the same number rate you are. Um, so I think that you can backtrack after you've taken um, Torjak here. Okay, good plan. Uh, Solid plan. Yeah. If you need to, maybe by the time you've taken Torjak, the war will be over since their other county is in rebellion. That's a good point. All right. Well, I'm good to I'm good to continue reality right, whenever you let's are. Go. Turn the simulation <laughs> back on, guys. Guys, simulation's off. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> all right i need 64 prestige in order to subjugate yamia and i'm only gaining it at three per month <laughs> so hopefully i get an event sometime soon Maybe a war would actually get me some of that. Mm, yeah, they're getting reinforcements, which is not great news. Thirteen hundred. That's yeah. That's odd. I guess those are their allies. Must be yeah. Um, are these all your troops? No, I said raise all, but it didn't raise all. Interestingly enough. Yeah, yeah. You've got seven hundred and thirty-three levies that are just not accounted for. Um, which is strange. And I wasn't watching when it happened, so I couldn't tell you why that was the case. Yeah, that's very weird. 
Um, hang on, let me pause and see if I can do something about that. Yeah, my noiety approves of me now. That's nice. One would want that. This would, for the listeners at home, be my uh, religious leader in the Ukonusko faith. So uh, it says my I have zero unraised soldiers, but it says total soldiers 1640, and then there's 1249 down there. Do I have, like, no. a cheeky army somewhere else? Oh, yeah, I sure okay. do. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? What? <laughs> Well, there's I'm not sure. Well, they need to they need to meet up before they can do much good, so indeed. Um, see what route they take if you just give them a move order down to Torjok, and it looks like they are not going to come in contact with anybody who will murder them. So, okay. I also don't see any red attrition skulls along the way. Um, it might cost you some embarkation money, but you seem to be okay on cash. Yeah, I'm decent. Flush. I'm decent. Okay, well, let's just do this. Don't know why that happened. I wish I'd noticed it sooner. Uh, but uh, other things that happened is our speed went down one. Oh, weird. Uh, probably due to connection stuff, but two is pretty slow, so I'm putting it back up. Yeah, I think I am gonna try to attack Karelia and gain some prestige. That whoop. Uh. Pause. Till death do us part, wife. As you drew your last breath relief washed over me jesus <laughs> perhaps i should be ashamed but in truth there was no love lost between us finally i am free to start my life anew jesus what a, what a warm guy it was, it was that dire my my okay button is not one day too soon and Good I God. Lose 12 stress woof <laughs> wow okay that, uh ugh. you think you know a person <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, and also I want to point out, my wife was the guardian of that daughter that whose guardians keep dying. Oh. Huh. So I am really unsure what to make of that. There's, yeah, there's some obvious headcanon possibilities there. For sure. Let's see. Um, who do I want... Honestly, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, I forgot that you could lose. Um, that you could lose prestige. Uh, depending on the match you made and getting married. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Which uh, makes which, which makes perfect really sense. Matter. Yeah, which doesn't usually matter to other characters or even to feudal rulers, but for tribal rulers, it's a pretty big deal. Um, one is one is reputation. That's true. So, what if I find somebody who would give me more prestige? Um, okay. Well, it's creepy and weird. Because she's 14, so we wouldn't actually be getting married. We'd be getting betrothed. Uh, but uh, it is 400 prestige. So Oof. bottom line. Uh, Every man has his price, and you may have just found yours. Well, I'm going to, to be evasive and say that I found King Patries and pretend <laughs> like I had nothing to do with it. No, sure. I thought, we, I thought we were doing deep role play there. That's fair. That's fair. This does not, <laughs> does not reflect on you. This is, this is a video game. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't reflect on me until i say it does and then right. it only reflects on me after that until i say it doesn't right right uh, <laughs> nice work if you can get it indeed okay while we're paused um actually no i have to let time advance i'm pausing okay i'm probably gonna repause right away because the siege is about to end oh yeah you're, you're good it's the name of the game all right all right so i need to join my troops and uh Okay, I'm good when you're good. All right, well, I have just declared war, so allow me to issue troop-raising orders. And uh, I will be 
uh, attacking the high, uh, the chief, high chief, yeah, high chieftain Piri of Karelia. And hopefully, I spent some piety doing that. So hopefully, what will happen is I will gain some prestige having done it. Let me also choose a new guardian for my once again guardianless um, daughter. A poor girl. Yeah, she's cynical, bossy, and hale, and a rational atheist. But um, she's ten. I don't want to accuse her of murdering all of her previous guardians. <laughs> there, there will come a point where the evidence becomes undeniable. But... Yeah, we may have like a bad seed situation going on yeah. here. A book I really resented reading in seventh grade reading club. Uh, but uh, a useful turn of phrase nonetheless. Okay. Unpausing. How is your war going? Decent. Uh, the, the siege was a success, so I'm now going to try to join my forces and uh, crush the opposition. But they will finish their siege before that happens, so it's going to get a little squirrely. Hopefully it'll be relatively quick to siege back. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Here's open. Oh, they're dividing their four. Well, they're fleeing is what they're doing. Interesting. Indeed. Oops. I have accidentally let Corelia get a start on the siege, which I can fix. <laughs> but uh, I was not as um, perspicacious as I should have been. Well, my marshal has by far the best uh, prowess score of probably anybody in all of Scandinavia. He's 32. <laughs> so, yeah. Hello, Hello nurse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pausing. All right. So we've I should win this fight. I've combined my forces. I'm headed back for Tikvin. They have split up and are fleeing, which is an interesting... Wait, I thought I joined yeah. my forces. Why are they not joined? Uh, they need to be stopped in the same place, and then you select both of them and hit combine. I thought that's what I did. All right, well, now you have them switching places. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's stop three stooges in here. Um, <laughs> okay, they're merged. Okay, they're both heading into that uh, eastern Tikvin barony of Borovici. Yeah. Okay. Once okay. they're both there, you should be able to just click and drag, and then there's a button on the panel for combined forces. Yeah, I a did very that. Very important button. Super important out. button. I thought that I had <laughs> tapped it, clicked it, smacked it, yeah. tickled that like button, but here we are. Uh, flicked it, spun it, bopped it. <laughs> there's a counter on this ball. <laughs> We were talking about for skippets clarity. during our tabletop yeah. session for those who, for those who were not alive in the 90s or did not remember skippets as I did not until I heard the commercial. Not even saw, just heard, and it oh, it came mm -hmm. it came rushing back. The the sense memories of, you know, squinting at a small TV. I assume Sunny D and or Gogurt in hand. Um, <laughs> real 90s memory. I like that you assume that you only had one of those in your hand. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> a skip it on each on each uh, ankle and uh, a double fisting Sunny <laughs> D and Gogurt. Uh, wearing uh, parachute pants and uh, <laughs> sitting on a trapper keeper. <laughs> yeah, my bed was just a stack of trapper keepers with something soft on top. Yeah. Your your pillow filled with scrunchies. <laughs> um. <laughs> hey, don't knock it till you try it. Slap. Slap bracelets up and down each arm. <laughs> uh, oh, to be asleep on a scrunch down mattress. <laughs> you know what? I bet if we advertised on enough podcasts, we could move some units of scrunch down mattresses. <laughs> Drew and Adam here for scrunch down mattresses. <laughs> Are you <laughs> reject modernity? Embrace tradition. <laughs> Did you did you buy one of those mattresses from another podcast? And then as soon as it was out of its guarantee, you decided you hated it. Well, we got the guarantee for you. 
<laughs> take that old mattress, set it on fire, send an angry letter to that other podcast because we have got the mattress you need. See also <laughs> scrunchy fabric sheets. <laughs> we take it apart, vintage scrunchies, and sew them together into a quilted fabric for your comfort. Ask us about our ask us about our Jinko jeans blackout curtains as well. It's just one pair of Jinko jeans. <laughs> yeah. We just cut down one side and then we're yeah. done. <laughs> this may need show notes just for anyone to whom these nineties references nineties and early two thousands references are illegible, but So here's the thing. I think better it's better to just send them on the weirdest wiki wander that they've ever been on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't supply them with anything and let them discover the joy for themselves. Sure. Yeah. I buy. <laughs> as, I'm I, now. as someone who teaches history, I'm going to take that as a best practice from you. Yes. Let's unpause. <laughs> I teach English. Sure. <laughs> sure. But everything is history. If you're teaching it right. No, you're not wrong. Uh, a number of my students have commented uh, that they're not sure why I don't teach history. When Lauren was uh, teaching music aunt. at a Catholic school, she that she was the only one teaching them any history whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, well, and you know, my my reply to my students in that case is always, "Yeah, well, they weren't hiring a history teacher, <laughs> <laughs> right?" <laughs> so they're trying to. So we're sieging back each other's capitals right now. This is a. a uh, you know. uh, they didn't take your capital, did they? Well, they no, that's true. Yeah, uh, they took Tukvin. <laughs> Presumably, took Tukvin. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? Uh, he was on purpose. It was stupid, but okay. it was on purpose. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't sure because you do mix up vowels a lot in these words. Why do I do that? Well, because they're unfamiliar words and, and all that. Exactly. But... Yeah, it's super understandable. It also just happens to be funny. Right, right. I guess I could just go right, march right down there and crush their army, too. That might actually be a better move. I mean, if they're going to siege this back before you're able to siege yours back, then probably. Yeah, let's then do that. They may not have enough people left to siege it back. In That's the future. right. Uh, mm, like yes, right. we've got a plan. The question is, do I start on the theologian branch, which could get me to profit and introduce the possibility of me reforming my religion if this guy lives long enough? Uh, or do I go with whole of body, which introduces the possibility of me living long enough to do anything else? Mm. Wow, this is like a Actually, surprisingly clever dialectic <laughs> as far as like yeah. body and soul and permanence and impermanence. I actually did just realize, though, that this is a guy who has spent the last five years on the verge of a mental breakdown. So whole of body is going to be the way to go because it includes the um, skill or perk carefree stress gain minus 20 percent uh so yeah i think that's that's gonna be the thing yeah let's do that lucas by the way and, says uh hearing that uh that lauren was a history teacher uh made him think of his seven-year music teacher being his 10-year history teacher that's funny she was never formally a history teacher it's just you know talking about talking about jazz men talking about the depression and the gilded age and then you know it's like yeah yeah, you have to in order for it to make any sense, you have to provide that context. But yeah, totally. Like having a teacher cross over like that is amazing. That is amazing. I, I teach American literature, so I do a lot of, you know I well specifically I mostly teach American literature up to the Civil War. So I just spend a lot of time talking about how Yep, we're back at slavery again. I know you think that I'm making it up, that everything connected to slavery, but boy did it. <laughs> boy boy howdy, does this if you read the texts is that yeah. is that well, a haunting? If you're reading, I mean, a, the majority of individually famous authors from that time period are American Romantic authors who were all staunchly abolitionist. Sure. Uh, so a lot of the poetry is about slavery. <laughs> like, it's right there, you know? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, unpausing. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh... My so marshal, my a, marshal, by the way, finally has a well-organized levy service in place. Uh, the the shakeup yeah. internally was a good idea, because boy, this clown oh. car I had previously <laughs> was <laughs> not doing a good job. Yeah, uh, the the consequences of appointing for status rather than skill are a lot more real in Crusader Kings three than they were in two. I find. Um. All right, their army was okay. utterly burninated, and now I'm heading back up to Tikvin to take back what was what was lost. That sounds lovely. I think you will do well. Unworthy peasants. 
while I was in the castle with Rauha. Rauha? Roha. Yeah. Her attention was caught by a criminal chained in the pillory. Rauha lifted her head and made a show of ignoring the criminals begging for water. Oh, God. <laughs> I guess that's her arrogant personality trait I, going through. I, I guess, goddamn. I can I could get her to be compassionate or callous with no child. Bring the poor man the water he asks for or spit him. Spit on him. Beat him. He deserves nothing less. But they both increase my stress and i am already at stress level one i am currently in the midst of a mental break so i guess she just stays arrogant speaking of stress and stressors um f's in chat for rurik rurik's and rurikid who died at the age of 28 after having his head ripped off by vangin a bold maniac uh Located in oh, I was pronouncing stuff so well, and then uh, and then the bold maniac happened to be from Avenima, Avenima. Yeah, you're yeah, you're doing as well as I would be able to. Um, I think if that's gonna be a um, uh, a Germanic name, V A G N is going to be a precursor to Vaughn. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, so closer to Vaughn oh, than yeah yeah. Uh, the G is there, but G's in Old Germanic languages could be either a G or a Y sound, um, depending. And sometimes a H sound, uh, if you were talking about like Low German. Sure. Um, so my best guess is uh, that because the A's are an A ah sound rather than an A ah sound at that stage before the Great Vowel Shift, I'm guessing uh, something more like Wagen. But, uh, you know. If there are people who know, don't hold it against me. Um, I'm going to hold a feast during this war. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds very on brand. You profligate, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, anything to get my stress down below 100, which this should, hopefully, fingers crossed, do it. Uh, are you going to unpause? Uh, I'm going to check where my stress level's at real quick here. I mean, um, mourning the loss of somebody with the name Rurid... Rurik, Rurikson, Rurikid uh, it would stress me out a lot. I'm I'm stressed just having to say it, so I can only imagine. I mean, I, I'm feeling the loss, and I don't exist in the same reality as that beautifully yeah. named person. Where do I look at my stress? Uh, you don't have to open your character sheet. Uh, you can actually just look at the bottom left corner uh, where your portrait is. It is mm-hmm. where your little silhouette of a head is. Oh, I see. So I'm at 48. Uh, so that's not terrible. No, you're about halfway to a, a, a stress level one. <laughs> what a carefree guy. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I, okay. on the other hand, am at 114, and that's the lowest I've been in probably 10 years. Yeah, that's not super great. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. I'm good to I'm good to proceed when you are. All right, I'm pausing. So presumably, even if the reinforcements come back, they're now... What's that? Sorry. So I don't know what made this guy so stressed out. I guess just bad luck. Yeah. Um, He's had some bad hands dealt. A cheery gathering. The guests are gathered in the great hall, lords and ladies from near and far reaches of the realm. The mood is bright and spirits are high as the feast begins. Welcome, friends. And I'm back in my fancy shirt, too, since I'm no longer sick. So I look I look pretty fly. <laughs> and let me designate a guardian for Urho. Really got to have some stewards in my realm, so... I'm pausing. Oh no. Feast all over my new shirt. Oh no. We could all tell Kielo had too much to drink, even though she insisted on showing us how sober she was. Simply rising from her seat proved too much for her, and now I'm covered in stinking vomit. I can set higher standards for courtesy for plus one prestige per month for five years at the cost of her disliking me and losing some prestige or I could say ha what a show you put on gaining some opinion from her losing some prestige and gaining some stress that is absolutely no contest you can just hate me Uh, I'm going to hold higher standards of courtesy (laughs) also you puked on me so I don't think I have to be nice to you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right 
unpausing? Yeah, let's do it. Gone. Just ransomed a war prisoner, so that's cool. Feast. Disaster strikes. My lord, the wine. We cracked open the next barrel. It has gone bad. It has all gone bad. The feast is still raging, but without drink, the mood is sure to dwindle at a cruel pace. And I do wish the viewer could see the sh shocked face that my <laughs> thing is currently making. It's not going to be on uh, your character sheet, right? That's only in the event. No, unfortunately. Right. No. It's a shame. It's a um, shame. Oof. I am going to go into debt to buy some more wine because the alternative is really terrible. Too terrible to uh, contemplate. How, how bad are we talking statistically? Gain a little money, lose a fair bit of prestige and then gain 44 stress because you are generous you cannot afford uh, uh, mm. uh, yeah this this feast is not going especially well i was kind of hoping for something a little chiller <laughs> well debt it is and hope oh i can't it won't let me go into debt oh no oh jeez. um it's grayed out oh no can i gift you something i can only gift you 37 does that help that would have done it, but I already clicked the thing. All right. It's all right. okay. Oh, that also would have uh, upped my stress by 35 because I'm greedy. <laughs> Which, you're right. Yeah. No, yeah. not worth it. Uh, take it from me, somebody who is back at 158 stress. This this feast was supposed to calm me down. Isn't that the way of it, though? That is. I'm pausing. That's how it goes. Sometimes it do be like that. <laughs> It's my party. <laughs> I just pictured your dude with that beard and in a party hat, you know, holding a noisemaker, <laughs> blowing on it, you know, despondently. With everyone headed for their respective homes, I'm proud to say the feast was a success. Nevertheless, I'm still grateful that the endeavor is over for now. Until next time, I gain 150 prestige. Everybody likes me. My feast ends. I don't lose any stress. What? Well, I mean, I guess it was kind of a stressful occasion. I am not at all happy with that outcome. <sighs> well, the prestige is nice. Unpausing. New peasant rabble. Let's wrap up this war before we have to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sieging back is that your territory should do a lot. To mm -hmm. That might be all I need, score. because I'm already at plus 67 war score. All right, let's see. I won that siege and took a prisoner. That's actually uh, my half-brother, Gorm Rurikson Rurikid. Oh, that's him. Apparently he's in Kaleva, or Karelia, sorry. Kaleva is a name of a person. Um... Yeah, let's see. You are losing 21.6% war score from having Tikvin uh, occupied. But only 3.6% of that is actually factoring in because you're getting plus 18 from uh, attacker controlling target. Um, attacker in this case being you. Uh, so I think just holding on to... Forjak is going to be your ticket. Yeah. Uh, as that 18 will tick up over time. Yeah, that's that's not looking to be a problem currently. So. Let's see. Ransom. Ransom them all. That, literally, I am only keeping this war going until I hear back on these ransoms. <laughs> I, I already have 100 war score. Nice. Uh, I'm pausing. Call to war. To the amicable King Petri of Finland, I call on you to honor our alliance and join me in the Belebean claim on the chiefdom of Ufa. This would be, I think, my betrothed uh, her dad, maybe? Uh -huh. Something like that. Uh, so I accept. I will join your war. But the chiefdom of Ufa... Yeah... Um, bro, that's on the other side of Kazaria from me. I'm not going to send my dudes over there. Hang on. Where is this? Where are they saying? 
Okay, so if you're zoomed out, uh, and you can find the uh, independent t territory of Uraltau over to our east. Okay. Uraltau. Uh, further east. Further east. South a little. Oh, there. Oh, oh okay. Yes, that was yeah. much further east than I was uh, thinking was within the realm of possibility. Yeah. Ufa is one of those uh, counties in that uh, territory. Understood. There it is, just to the south. There you go. Ufa. There's Ufa. That is where my ally, the chief of Bellabe, Bellabeg, Bellabe, just to the west immediately of, of Ufa. Uh, yeah. He is my betrothed father and is trying to take that, that county. Got it, it is a ways off. So I'm involved in that war, but boy, am I not going to send troops. <laughs> so <laughs> I roughly, <laughs> I was going to say roughly how long of a march is that in in-game time? I haven't done anything remotely like that in three. I don't honestly know uh, because I haven't really played much in the steps and my troops are all foot troops. Um, my understanding but... is a land war in this part of the world usually goes super well for the invading army. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, what could go wrong? <laughs> Um, but uh, I'm guessing it would be at least a year to get out there. And after I got through about Novgorod, I would be... Um, I would be... Um, boy, brain just shut down on me all of a sudden. Suffering attrition. Sure, yeah. Boy, Significant attrition. Hard. Also... The king of Estonia died. So there's now a kingdom of Novgorod, of which you are a part. I noticed that just this yeah. very moment. So that's that's a shakeup. Uh, a kingdom of Novgorod, of which you are about two-thirds <laughs> in terms of acreage. Yeah, um, that this bodes well for my project, because I'm about to expand that territory further. Yeah, well, and if you get that Jarldom of Luki, you will be one of three vassals that the king of Novgorod has directly. Everybody yeah. else will be reporting to either you or High Chief Desvirga, who admittedly is extremely powerful. She is much more powerful than her liege is currently. Sure. I would expect some intrigue to come from that. I would, I would guess so. And since I'm her marshal, I'm going to be involved one way or another. Um, yeah, well, and you're only a little less powerful than she is. Right. Uh, and certainly more powerful than your new king. So yeah. this might be a time where ambitious men can make their mark upon the world or, you know, whatever other thing a documentary on History Channel would say. <laughs> Sounds to me like everything's coming up, Helgi. <laughs> That's usually what they say. <laughs> As the old saying goes. All right, good to go anywhere. I uh, gotta arrange a marriage real quick now that I'm finished finding uh, where that war was happening. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no, totally. And, uh, Would you say that your participation in that war is finished? Maybe I would have until I heard you say it out loud, and now I'm not so sure. I'll show myself out. <laughs> no, that is exactly the sort of thing I would absolutely say. I'm just glad you got to it first that I didn't have to. <laughs> you saved me the indignity, and I shall owe you. All right. <laughs> there may come a day when I ask you a pun-related favor. <laughs> oh, my favorites. Um... Okay, unpausing and then ending this war once I hear back from this ransom request. Cool. As long as nothing disastrous happens by the time this eight-month siege is over, my war should be pretty well wrapped up. And here we go. I can enforce my demands again on uh, High Chieftain Piri of Karelia. He has been very ill-used by me, but you know what? I He could have just agreed to become my vassal, so... You know, it's really, if you think about it, it's his fault. <laughs> I haven't thought about it, but I do think it is his fault. <laughs> Disband those. Yeah, I got, I got one of them neighbor's war resolve notifications, I think for the oh. first time in the history of, of you waging wars. So we're, we're officially neighbors. We're, we've been, our territories have been creeping toward each other. <laughs> uh, well, we're not quite uh, on that front, but I do think that we're neighbors. Um... Well, Vodi, Vodi and Novgorod. Is part of my kingdom. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we do we do sort of share but a border at this point. We do still have just the uh, county of Onega um, between us. Oh, interesting. Uh, 
What what chucklehead is would, running that stupid county? The guy that I just beat in the war. And took one county <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so let me see if I can't grant this county to somebody, if not somebody deserving, then somebody who doesn't hate my guts. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and go from there. All right, this guy seems pretty chill. If there's someone deserving who doesn't hate your guts, that's always the best, but, you know. Oh, my God. I know what it was now that pushed my stress so high. What? Giving away titles causes me 44 stress because oh, I am ambitious. Oh, that. Mm. Yeah, there you go. That'll do it. Fortunately, I'm not over my um, domain limit yet. Unfortunately... It's going to make it hard to instantiate some baronies uh, and some county level dopes because uh, I can't give counties away without losing my mind. Uh, all right, well. <laughs> Love Crafty and Kings I'm 3. <laughs> sure, there's a mod. Oh, there must be. Hope, well, oh boy, knowing this community, it stands a better than even chance of being a little racist. But I don't know if you, you, I'm sure you're familiar with that meme that's like someone looking at cyberpunk, you know, and it's like, you know, anti corporatism, whatever, and it's all going over his head, and he's saying, ooh, future, right? There's a similar one that is uh, Lovecraft and you know it's the saying ooh scary stuff and someone else is going it's actually fine that you missed the point of this one I should turn my Steam notifications off while we're doing this. <laughs> Lest someone see <laughs> friends' names and what they're playing. Oh, hold on here. Something's going on. A scheme at court. My spy master, who is looking, ha has gone from somewhat pallid to, like, positively vampiric in recent years, uh, has come oh, to me boy. with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill my wife, Chief, Chief Dis Pripyshek. Uh, I mean, my only option is we must stop the villain behind this, which, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hey. I, um... I have no insight on who it could be because I can think of a lot of people who might have a reason. I mean, it could be my son. That would, that could be, that could be a way that this story ends. True. <sighs> Don't you need a special trait to plot against immediate family members? No, that's just to plot against your children. You need the sadistic trait, right? I think so. Yeah. That sounds right. Anyway, okay, I'm good to proceed when you are. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm pausing. Let's see. I'm going to try to take the fight to Biarmia here soon now that I have enough um, prestige to do so. But I'm going to try to let my armies reinforce some first. So. A hostile army is incoming, but they are a tiny hostile army for babies. <laughs> For babies. For babies. My apologies to uh, my apologies for that accent to any viewers from from. I mean, you tell if you were offended, then I'm sorry to your part of the world for what I just did. Um, <laughs> because who knows where the accent was supposed to come from? Exactly. It turns out that I can't really make Slavic come through in a gravelly voice anyway. So, um, okay. So rough housing. Oh, whoa. The play date between my son and heir Kaleva and Chieftain Urho's son Kalevi, I bet that never gets confusing, <laughs> came to an abrupt end as Kalevi was rendered lifeless in a horrid accident. Wait, what? <laughs> I swear, father, it was just a game, Kaleva assures me as the chieftain demands justice. Yeah, no, his six-year-old kid apparently got roughhoused to death. Uh, by my 14 year old kid and heir boy well that's not great my heir is not shaping up to be amazing anyway uh, we're going to have an interesting next couple of episodes <laughs> is what it's sounding like 
Yeah, I think so. Okay, so... Poof. Uh, I can imprison my son. No one can escape the consequences of their actions. Which makes Urho like me. Although it makes Kaleva dislike me. I'm going to say, you will not touch my child. Uh, which forms a rivalry between me and Chieftain Urho. I'm going to say, I promise that I will discipline him. Which gives Kaleva a 68% chance of gaining compassionate and a 31% chance of gaining sadistic. Oh no, no. And loses me 150 prestige. Whoa. And now, so are there drawbacks in game to compassionate? Like, is that if, would that be like if you get that role, if, the, if you get the two thirds rather than the one third, would that be a strict ish improvement to your air? Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's pretty trade offy. Um, diplomacy plus two, intrigue minus two, natural dread minus 15, dread decay plus 100%, mm. attraction opinion plus five, opinion of callous and sadistic characters minus 15. And then it also can make you stressed out by doing things like executing people. Sure. Um, sadistic is, I mean, kind of similar, uh, a little bit just better, honestly. <laughs> Intrigue plus two, prowess plus four, natural dread plus 35. The big kicker is general opinion minus 10. Just everybody likes you less. Woof. Yeah, uh, but you can use hostile schemes against your own children uh, if you're sadistic. So the big thing there is just that 150 prestige penalty is, is a big hit for me. Um, and I can also go, you have to forgive him. Please, I'll do anything. And Chief Nerho gains a weak hook on me. Um... Here's a question. Are any of Kaleva's younger brothers shaping up better than he is? It's a good question. Because if so, throwing him in jail and letting him rot may not be a terrible idea. <laughs> uh... Yeah, you know what? Oh, you know what? It's not me imprisoning him. It's Chief Urho imprisoning him. Oh, interesting. Let's have a look at Chief Urho. He is melancholic, an eager reveler, a seducer, scarred, an aspiring blade master, an intricate web weaver, cynical, brave, and shy. So I don't think there's a decent chance uh, that he will... I think there's a, a, a relatively small chance that he will actually like torture my son to death or anything so which like I you will, said trade offy yeah i think i will let him imprison my son imprisoned kaleva my trenchant son and heir is now held against his will by chieftain urho what can be done for him i mean presumably i can like ransom him he's smoldering in that jail cell he's he's not thrilled yeah, no, he was he was pretty. Um, did he have the trait vengeful what? before, or is that is that new? He did. He okay. Did. Yeah. Um, if I give Urho fifty gold and a favor, he will let him go, but not just for one or the other. And I was kind of trying to avoid the hook thing anyway, so, eh, you know, he can just kind of hang out for a minute, <laughs> cool his heels, as it were. All right, sorry for the extended pause. That's all good. You got to scare that kid straight. To proceed. Yeah. <laughs> Unpause. Got 24 days left in the siege, and then hopefully the war will be over. Yes. Fingers crossed. I remember when I was in Boy Scouts, we took a tour of the brand new, as yet unused, St. Tammany Parish Jail uh, in Covington, Louisiana. Um, and I remember thinking oh wow this isn't so bad because it hadn't been used <laughs> like the whole thing looked like a brand new suburban home with steel doors <laughs> very secure yeah i was 13 and very easily impressed unpausing now control tick uh. man i'm at 99 percent I am being raided by both of your lieges. I'm going to pause real quick. 
for two reasons. One, I can enforce my demands, which I will obviously do. Yay. To my liege, blessings upon you and your house. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. Groovy, 100 fame, so be it. You, you are, are now, now a mighty Jarl. Cool. And let's see if I was right. Yes, you are now a peer of your former liege, who has only a couple hundred fewer troops than she does. And you control comparatively more territory. So yeah, good job, e O Jarl of Luki. Why? Thank you. I have I have gained back gained back what my what was once lost to my not especially esteemed but increasingly esteemed family. Uh, time to gain the trait gallant. Uh, Marshal plus two prowess plus four monthly prestige plus twenty percent attraction op opinion plus twenty percent. Yeah, that seems groovy. Let's do that. Oh. Minsk has become White Roos. Ah. The uh, Jarl of Minsk, Polotsk, and Polotsk, and Smolensk uh, has crowned himself king. Look at the look at the cheekbones on that lad. Cos yeah, Cossus Belli was handsomeness. <laughs> yeah. Uh Cossus Belli was look at me. Um, <laughs> come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Uh his his cheekbones are almost as sharp as the consonants in his name. <laughs> <laughs> that is what his profile says, yeah. <laughs> his Twitter bio. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um let us see. I am mostly reinforced, yes. So, declare war on the Armia to subjugate High Chieftess Tadane. And... Yes. Yes, this is good. And I do have my rally point. So I'm going to declare this war. I'm going to subjugate Bialmia. And I'm sure nothing will go awry. I have a question. So the I war's mean. over, but the first army of Yama, which is a hostile army, uh, commanded by yeah. Chief Orho, they're still listed as a hostile army. Sure. Let's see. Uh, Chiefdom of Kakaselmi is definitely in my territory. So I don't know precisely what he's up to. Let's see. He is... He has been raided by the king of Novgorod. That is why he is hostile. Gotcha. He will remain hostile until, um, well, the 30th of June, 1 AD, which I assume means that because he is still actively being raided by the king of Novgorod, there is no countdown. Got it. Okay, so I could just kind of let that go <laughs> oh, yeah. through the moment i yeah. unless he starts sieging your territory or raiding your territory i would just completely ignore him okay i can't disband my armies while he's this close because he is technically hostile interestingly but right okay good when you are all right i'm pausing Let's see how my b army in front shapes up always b army Sorry. Go be army. <laughs> <laughs> very, very stupid. You got a, like you got a titter out of me. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to watch this battle happen. It's really none Let's, of my concern. Um, siege the tribe of Kim in the county of Vienna. No, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Which, honestly, once I have control of it, might become its name. <laughs> <laughs> Vienna, no, not that one. Love it. Yeah. All right, I'm pausing. Oh, damn. My son Kaleva has died. Oh. Died in prison. Like, very quickly, though. Like, suspiciously yes. quickly. He was actually executed on Chief Erho's orders. Uh. Which I did not think he would do, because usually that actually um, really messes up your opinion stuff. Yeah. Um, you read those tea leaves, and I think you made a sound deduction and yet 
I, I made the mistake, and here it was, of thinking that the AI would uh, be logical as a player, <clears throat> whereas the AI tends to behave as a person who lives in this world. Sure. So, outliving a child. My son Kaleva has died. I had so many hopes for you, my sweet child. All the things you would learn, experience, and do. There were so many possibilities. A whole life to live. Maybe you would have had children of your own one day, but now... None of those things will ever come to be, all thanks to Chieftain Urho, dot, dot, dot. And my OK button here is rest in peace, little Kaleva, and gain 44 stress. Oh, oh So this man. was actually an assassination attempt. Yeah. Uh, just an indirect one. Well Curses. Then. Yeah, that didn't go great. No, no, that was that was a miscalculation on my part. I, I accept full responsibility. However, I can now lawfully imprison Chief Erho. Uh, I, I won't work. Uh, he uh, will not agree to his own imprisonment. Um, it does say he unlawfully executed family. So, you know. Uh, but yeah, he is he is not going to say, yeah, okay, I'll go. <laughs> uh is perhaps not surprising okay i have a quick um, question yes. what can i do about the stuff that i'm currently going to lose on on death via confederate partition very little okay um since i'm still a tribal account, leader yeah it does take into account things like um granting titles that you hold to your primary heir mm -hmm. um that either won't be permitted or it will alter the lines of succession uh, sure. such that everything kind of still uh, comes out relatively even um, Jarldoms uh, you know if you have them uh, tend to stay together so you've got territory in the Jarldoms of Luki, Novgorod, and Vespia but you don't really have all of any of them except Vespia. You got most of Luki. But, um... Yeah, if you could get the Jarldom of Vespia under your control, that would... No, actually, that would be bad. Now that I'm thinking about it, you're not a kingdom title. That would split your territory entirely. As long as you just have the one Jarldom, you won't hold on to the territory, but you will hold on to the, like control of the territory if that makes sense yeah i follow um which is you know how my finnish kingdom is working i've only got two counties myself and i only inherited one but uh it's all still under the umbrella of the kingdom of finland but yeah that would be just uh you know trying to get that uh those tribal advances sorted Uh, so that you can become feudal eventually. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, <laughs> my king has an inferior force, but not by much. Oh, you could declare war directly on him? I could do that. That's kind of fun, honestly. Um, because, here's the thing. He has 1,800 uh, with his one ally. And you've got 2,028 just by yourself mm -hmm. you also i'm also very rich so i could hire mercenaries correct you also have an ally to the north that has three thousand and one troops um who is currently in a war but once that war has finished being prosecuted could be called in provided you have enough prestige to do so prestige is definitely the thing i am poorest in unfortunately but well, are you likely to die soon Let's see. Not especially. Well, I'm 58. Yeah, you're ailing, but you're not at yeah. the end of your rope. Um, Is your thought that if I'm going to do it, 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 it would need to be soon? Well, my thought is, is that if it's going to work at all, it's going to have to be a, with me being called in. And sure. You're going to have to have more prestige to do that. So I think you can wait and farm some prestige. What is the best way to farm prestige? 
I probably should have asked well, this a lot sooner. Your rate is currently not bad, right? Just waiting. Um, winning wars that you can declare with piety, uh, win without allies, and declare victory in is not a bad way to get modest amounts of prestige. Um, marrying somebody from an important family uh, is a good way to get prestige. Throwing feasts is a good way to get prestige. Uh, although it obviously, as we saw earlier, carries risks. <laughs> a few, yeah. Um, hunts can gain you prestige. Uh, certain skills in the lifestyle perks trees can gain you prestige. Um, if I think of some others, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Hmm. There may actually also be something that your council can do. Okay, yeah, the foreign affairs for your chancellor gets you some prestige mm -hmm. every month. All right, my council is definitely... Oh, you can usurp the High Kingdom of Vespia. Okay, so that's actually a little bit of a trap. Because if you do that, then your titles will split among your sons. Got it, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You'll definitely want to do that once you have a kingdom title. But while your highest title is a Jarldom, you don't want more than one. Because as we saw with the Kingdom of Estonia, it will just split. Sure. Okay. All right. Let's, let's advance the clock here. All right. I'm pausing. Did I, did I say unpause? Because I meant pause. My daughter-in-law, <laughs> Venamo, has given birth to a son. Since the little one is part of the Rurikid dynasty, he should be blessed with a good name. Anders is a pretty good name. Um, let's go with a good Norse Just name. Sure mage. <laughs> yeah, really, though. Um, Thorfur is a pretty delightful name. Yeah, may you grow strong and wise, Thorfur. Okay, here we go. All right, siege has, the siege of Vienna has started. No, not that <laughs> siege one. Siege of Vienna, no, not that one. <laughs> to my vassal, this would be uh, from from the King of Novgorod. As an influential Jarl, it is only fair that you have a voice on my council. In recognition of this fact, I hereby offered you the position of Steward of Novgorod. I mean, yeah, cool. what, am I, what am I going to say now? How is your stewardship? Not great, I don't think. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> nice to Oh, no, it's good. It's, it's actually quite good. It's it's not as good as my marshal, but it is quite good. Um, so that's actually your steward. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I thought I clicked over to Liege's council. Is 17. So you're actually pretty good. Yeah. He's yeah. not making it an idle choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, interestingly, my marshal is better than High Chiefess Verga, who is now his marshal. Yeah. No, that was probably a good good call on his part then. Yeah. It's not going to stop me from, you know, ganking him at the earliest opportunity, but, you know, but still, you know, it's, it's good to know the boss has a good head on his shoulders. Ultimately, it's High Chiefess Verga's fault because, you know, she invaded you. In fact, if you uh, overthrow the King of Novgorod, she will end up being your vassal and, you know, how sweet will that be? The irony would be delicious. It is true. Okay, starting the clock. I don't imagine she will enjoy that, but that's her problem. I mean, she very much started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a very literal sense. Interesting. I did not realize there are two counties it's called Onega. Exact same spelling. That and They're not even that far apart. Doesn't sound confusing <laughs> at all. Yeah. I guess that's Biarmia's thing, is just... They've got a Vienna and they've got an Onega, uh, both of which exist elsewhere. Right. Seven months in this siege. Still well supplied, not losing money. Probably going to get raided sometime soon, but you know, my chiefs and Jarls can fend for themselves. They're big chiefs and Jarls. They can handle it. I mean, the whole point of having a Jarl or a Chief is, is that they can handle things like raids. Hey, I 
married the girl I got um, betrothed to a while back. Oh, she's of age now. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's 16. I'm 42. Yeah, that seems <laughs> that seems just fine. Hmm. Well, she's entering a household that already includes a 29-year-old and a 30-year-old concubine. Yeah, that seems like it's probably going to be a very chill experience for her. <laughs> probably. She's got some wicked cool scars, though. Hold on, I gotta check this out. Actually, they're not even scarred over. They're just wounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's got the... Uh the trait wounded i wonder if i can sick my uh court physician on that oh she is herself the child of a concubine that's interesting hmm. well i guess i can't do anything about it now all right i'm pausing cool so the Armia has enough troops that they could come attack me, but I haven't seen their army at all yet, and that worries me. A notable guest has arrived. Stan Svalta has a claim on... Hold on. It went away. Where'd it go? I want it back. <laughs> you should be able to look at your... Um court yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Look at people at your court and find her there she is has a useful county claim Stanislava oh she's got several Sandomirs Radom and Lublin probably Lublin so as a practical added. matter what would I do about the fact that she has those claims you could press them for her, um, but they are in Poland. <laughs> They're, yeah, yeah, there's there's that issue. Hrodna. So, I mean, she would like you a lot if you did that, and then she would be a ruler who liked you a lot. Yeah. But I don't find that there's a lot of... Um, as, as a more prominent ruler in this game, there isn't a lot of reason to set somebody else up. That's fair. Unless it's getting you a specific benefit in terms of like you know uh fucking with one of your rivals or something sure sure what would be the That's pretty case specific is it a good idea to invite her to court like on a more permanent basis i mean i, I like your I mean, style come hang out and you got oh money. i have to pay her interesting i mean that's fine I have money. I need I need to be glorified. Okay, let's go. Uh, my my wedding to that 16-year-old uh bumped me up a prestige level, so cool. <laughs> if it's good enough for Jerry Seinfeld, it's good enough for the Kennedy oh, family. Man. Oh. Mercy for mercenaries. The bustling of an inn, a fine cider, a calm evening after a long day of training. My tankard is knocked out of my hand by a mercenary reeling from a blow, and all hope of relaxation drains away into the floor along with my cider. Please, my lord, the innkeeper begs. Owlander's thugs have been drinking me dry without paying for days, and their fighting is scaring the staff and guests. Uh, I'll pay for your drinks if you leave at once, in which case I lose kind of a lot of money. I gain generosity to mercenaries. What does that do? Uh, reduces mercenary higher cost. Makes sense. I gain 50 martial lifestyle experience, but I gain 10 stress. Or uh, I expunge bandits. I still get the 50 martial lifestyle points. I haven't needed mercenaries in a long time. What does expunged of bandits do? Popular opinion plus 20. That sounds handy. Let's do that. Yeah, if you needed mercenaries right this instant, the first one might be worth it, but... Yeah, I mean, if, if I want to stack the deck and immediately declare war on my king, I guess. But... Hmm, that's actually an interesting... I mean, yeah, that, 
that would be your other option, I guess, to calling me in, which I don't know that you have the prestige for. I think it's usually 150 or higher. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you could get, uh, what, they come in, like, year or so contracts, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, for, I mean, you could get a few, honestly. You know what? Let's do that. You know, maybe maybe it's time. I need to be right back. So if you wouldn't mind uh, uh, running in place for just a moment, I'll do that, and then maybe we'll decide what the next chapter looks like for these two <laughs> these two knuckleheads. So out of shape. <laughs> uh. So I think I mentioned it before on previous streams, but uh, one of my Crusader Kings two games uh, before the idea of retinues or standing armies, what has become men at arms in Crusader Kings three got kind of nerfed a little bit. I was playing as uh, first Novgorod and then Russia and then the Russian empire all before the uh, Mongols showed up in the 1200s. And uh, I had built a really solid territory for myself. I had tens of thousands of troops in the standing army. And I thought I am as ready as a person can be. And that may or may not have been true, but um, boy, when the Mongols showed up, horse archers just had no counter in my armies. I could not counteract them. And they had, I want to say like 75,000 troops. If I raised all my levies, I had a total of probably about 120,000. And I had them all in one place, but uh, I couldn't move as fast, and uh, they tended to get shredded. And... Uh, I was kind of relieved when a patch invalidated my save a little while later. It nerfed retinues, so I couldn't really have had that strong a presence in that same way uh, again if I had started over. But I was so demoralized <laughs> by just having gotten steamrolled by a numerically inferior force that uh, I was happy to start over elsewhere. So I am very interested to see what happens in uh 250 300 years uh i think we have the mongols in this game showing up around their historical time but not precisely at it um there was also a mechanism early on in crusader kings 2 it got removed or changed pretty pretty quickly but uh where you could just pay a flat rate to have a flat percentage chance of assassinating somebody uh, and so a strategy for dealing with the Mongols, if you were in their path early on in Crusader Kings 2's life cycle, was just to save up a bunch of money before they showed up and then send an army of assassins after uh, Temujin, Chinggis Khan. And uh, if you managed to kill him, the event troops, uh, the 75,000 horse archers all went away and the Mongols were suddenly much, much less uh, formidable. But uh, they, they put in the scheme system uh, as the only way to assassinate somebody. And unless you had somebody in Chinggis Khan's court, um, you were kind of out of luck. Uh, although I did have one time where uh, I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but somebody managed to convert uh, Chinggis Khan to Christianity about a month into his conquest and suddenly he lost a lot of his casus belli against catholic and orthodox christians uh and so he still had a bunch of troops he still had a lot of military might and expansionist mindset but he was focused um on the steppes and on like tibet and persia and uh sort of central asia uh more so than uh eastern europe which was comparatively kind of nice uh since i wasn't playing in one of those areas um, i'm also looking currently our our steppe cultures are doing reasonably well in terms of um territory uh Kazaria, the kyrgyz khanate uh Oga's Il, and jets jets uh, i'm is... back if that wasn't clear i'm doing cinematography as you describe this Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I was just kind of uh, taking stock of the steps and describing what it's like when the Mongols invade. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Yeah, I, I, uh, 
have definitely had some some very different experiences. Uh, one that I mentioned while you were gone was um, in one case, somebody managed to convert Genghis Khan to Christianity about a month into his conquests, <laughs> which took away a lot of his ability to declare war on Orthodox and Catholic <laughs> Christians. Um, which was a, a feat of amazing sabotage. That's incredible, yeah. Anyway. So if I were I to declare war that. on my king, uh, yes. it looks like I don't have a claim to the title of king. I have a claim to the high chiefdom of Vespia. Oh, no, there we go, king. Well, let's let's hit change objectives and see. Okay. So, yeah, you have Vespia and you have Rusa. Neither of which would get you out from under his thumb. Um, Vespia, the high chieftain, that's a Jarldom, so that would result in your territory being split upon your death. Mm -hmm. um, chieftain of Rusa would be, hey, buddy, that belongs to me. Why are you holding it? And then after that, you would still be his subordinate. Sure. Just with an extra piece of territory. Um and so he would probably not like you very much. Uh, you could go with an independence war, uh, which you still have the prestige for, uh, if only barely. And that would take all of your current holdings out of his territory and make your own private country, so to speak. Um, which would leave him as a king and you as a high chief uh, or a jarl. But an independent one a petty king if you will sure sure um so mechanically what's stopping me from usurping his title as king uh a claim on it and or control of more of the territory than he has if Understood. you have enough territory you can usurp a title uh if the person you're usurping it from is not at war and you have enough money i think it's just money in this one Gotcha. Uh, double check that. I can use uh, Karelia as a test case here. Uh, yeah, you gain prestige and lose money for usurping. Got it. Uh, you have to have control of enough of the territory. I think it's like 80% uh, of the de jure territory uh, before you can do that. So, like. Let's see. Theoretically, if I wanted to usurp the kingdom of Novgorod, I would have to have six counties of the... Oof. How many? Of the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So yeah, you'd have to have 75% of the territory for kingdom level. Um usurpation you've got one two three four five six uh seven and he would still have one two three four five six so you would need to take a few more territories to get his title from him gotcha okay that said gaining independence having just the one jarl level title you would still be a unified realm upon your death and probably a superior one economically and militarily to the kingdom of Novgorod, so meh. Up to you. It's an interesting thing. I've never played from this early in any of these games, so the idea, you know, like, it feels probably worse than it is to lose titles upon the death of the character you're playing as. Like, it's, it's not as big a deal as I'm making it in my head, but there's a part of me that wants to move forward you know what i mean yeah it very much depends right like if you have one title at a higher rank than the rest honestly losing some counties to your kids eh, it's sure. not great it it limits your personal power in a way that feels you know like you take a step back every time you die but you know you're building the country you know the kingdom still sure uh in a way that you know is like concrete See also, Finland, uh, you know, currently. I only hold two counties out of the entire kingdom of Finland. Uh, but, you know, I'm still king. Sure. Similarly, you could still be the Jarl of Luki, 
and hold on to stuff that is de jure in Novgorod and Vespia. Um, granted, there are penalties in this particular installment of the series for sure, doing that, sure. but they're not game breaking. You know, they're not run ending, so to speak. Sure. Um, yeah, it's really just you know, do you feel more secure biding your time as a vassal and consolidating power under the banner of Luki, or do you feel more secure if you can strike out on your own? Yeah. Another possibility too is is that if you have enough territory, you can um, found a kingdom. I don't right. know because uh, I I can only see the empire one at this point. Uh, which takes some considerable resources. You have to have, what, 1,200 gold and 2,000 prestige and 600 piety and a realm size of 120. But, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for talking me through that. I will probably go with the bide my time route. Yeah. Honestly, that probably is the prudent way to go, but I know that prudence has not always been our watchword on this particular <laughs> street. There will be a time for imprudence, but it's not an in-character form of imprudence in this case, so I'll, I'll let it go for now. Fair enough. All right, here we go. And away we go. You know, it's been... What? 25 years since Super Mario 64 came out and I still always hear the sound bite here we go <laughs> I thought you were going to say bra, 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 let's go that one too honestly yeah. they're, they're kind of inseparable any so, time I'm, a character starts doing an idle animation in any game, I go, I'm a tired, which is. <laughs> <clears throat> that one has not come to my mind as often, which honestly, now that I'm reminded of it, is a shame. <laughs> so, my boiling anger uh, event. You might be a king, but you are also an abhorrent knave. The unprovoked anger expressed by my brother, uh, Vaino comes as a complete surprise he's been under a lot of stress lately lately to behave by but to behave like this and my only option for uh resolving the event is that even he struggles it's calming and i lose 24 stress <laughs> i mean you know that's that's fine yeah no it actually put me back under 200 which is just wonderful who needs a feast if I were to, for example, put on a feast, where would I yes. do that? The decisions button. That's button. what I thought. Yeah. Uh, host a feast, call a hunt down there at the bottom. I'm just seeing what I can do here. Oh, okay. yeah. Of course. I want to found a witch coven. What requirements do I not fulfill? You can click on it to find out. There we go. At least 60% of adult house members, currently 18.7. Okay. Must be witches. This might be a goal. Which goals? <laughs> so coven goals. Hashtag coven goals. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can only host a feast every five years. I gain piety. I don't really need more piety. That's interesting. I guess different cultures gain different things from feasting. Mm-hmm. I mean, piety is not a bad thing to have, but it's not what I most urgently lack. Yeah, you actually have quite a bit of it. Yeah, I have a ton of it. I don't even know what to do with it at this point. There's certain cause of spell I that use it, um, but I, I, right. I don't have other conditions in place to make major religious reforms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, reforming your religion is uh, the main thing to do with piety this early in the game, but it is very expensive. Yes. So way more than, than what you've got. Um, what does a hunt do for you? Uh, as a Norse Slovianskin just reduces may stress. get opportunities to increase prestige that seems super worth it it's not that expensive yeah it does come with some risks depending on the events that you get but... I mean what what am I gonna live to 90 yeah let's let's give it a go well 
Is your name Erland the Second of Scandinavia? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, hold on, let me check. Uh, no, no, it is not. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Let's let's let time advance and see what happens. See if I get if I get gored by a boar or if things go my way. Hunt the foragers. The woods truly is the mantle of the poor, but as the stag fl- what the fuck does that mean? But as the stag flees in panic from foraging peasants, oh I see. I feel my patience wearing thin. Surely there must be better things to do in uh, Bizichi than picking roots and mushrooms. Damn guy. Uh, so let's see. Guards drive the rabble out of my hunting ground. So that gets me some of that prestige I want. Um, peasants denied forest for ten years. Oh God. I'm, I like start the closing of the commons. <laughs> like that's mm, that burns. Uh, so popular opinion is reduced by thirty. Um, how do we check what my overall popular opinion is? Is that on my character sheet? Did I lose you? Let's see, if we lost Adam, or if I've just bored him to death. He's still in the chat. Hey, Adam, if you hear me say a thing. Hang on. Technical difficulties. I think I heard you make a noise, Adam. I heard a tap. Uh, can you hear me? Now I can, yeah. Oh, whew. My uh, my microphone just decided that it didn't want to, to do this anymore. <laughs> didn't want to microphone? <laughs> um, we can take that as a sign and wrap up soon, but I should I should figure out what's up here. Um, I'm trying to figure... So basically I can get uh, prestige, which is what I'm here for, uh, right. but the peasants will, you know, if I, I close the, I begin to close the commons and, and, <laughs> and that sucks. Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to figure out is how urgent a problem popular opinion would be. Sure. So click on any county, like okay. the, 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 the barony level uh, will show the county information just sure. fine. Like, um, so any of those that you control, uh, there's a little line for popular opinion. Gotcha. Uh, and you can see where it's coming from. Um, and that's going to affect uh, eh, control uh it's gonna affect peasant rabbles and their formation it's gonna affect a few other things okay popular opinion already not um, great i mean look we're here for the damn prestige whatever <laughs> get this rabble out of my hunting grounds how dare well, partially... you how dare you go after i'm sorry what was it again food they should have thought of that yeah. before they became peasants like peasants uh yeah well and you're you're kind of in a, a tough spot for uh, popular opinion anyway because you're culturally Norse and none of the people you rule are right yet. right yet okay <laughs> all right onward so yep. hate hate me away rabble <laughs> Oop. what I got greetings King Patri of Finland your vassal Jarl Hrolfer dared to lead my mother Duoya in carnal sin Whoops. I demand satisfaction for this slight says Jarl Thorstein Lutzen of Jamtaland um um <laughs> this wasn't on my bingo card yeah I, um, I don't honestly know what you want me to do about it um Rolfer will plead for your forgiveness publicly, I think. He loses opinion of me, but whatever. Um, I don't have to pay anything, which is, you know, That's where the, the rubber thing, meets yeah. the road for me. Uh, I am an extremely practical read poor king. <laughs> that is uh, what that sometimes means, yeah. So. All right, on pausing. A hunt. Returning from the wild. The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses to leave the taiga behind as the servants prepare the stag and other game for the journey back. 
To heed the call of the wild is usually an adventure, and this outing truly delivered both the good and the bad in overabundance. Okay, so I get 150 more prestige and the hunt ends. So yeah, nothing disastrous happened, and I got a good chunk, so that's... Yeah, I think your 33 gold honestly bought quite a, a good bit of prestige there. Yeah, yeah I'll agree. Okay, cool. Hmm. Let's see how my conquest of the Armia goes from this point. How do I uh, squander everything I just gained? Oh, Hovenets. Actually got another uh, event here, so the map... My spies have informed me about a hunter causing a ruckus at the local tavern. The man has not been spending large... <laughs> not a ruckus! Anything but a ruckus! The man has been spending large amounts of gold and bragging loudly about the great deal he struck with, quote, a fancy lady in pearls and silk. Apparently, he drew a map of the local taiga for an unknown noblewoman. The spies think the lady must be scheming against me or one of my subjects. Okay. Huh. So I could say thank you for bringing this to my attention, which gives me the trait more vigilant, more dil more vigilant for uh, for five years. So that's intrigue plus one, scheme resistance plus eight. Or I can say this idiot belongs in my dungeon. I get the same uh, buff, but also this guy doesn't especially like me, which makes sense. Um, and then he becomes a known criminal, which means I can imprison him without being viewed as a tyrant. Hmm. Who is this guy? He's an evil antagonist. <laughs> <coughs> okay. A wandering evil antagonist at that. Yeah. And that seems like a decent person to imprison. <laughs> um, Honestly. As these things go. Um, he already doesn't like me. So yeah, I mean, enjoy the dungeon, buddy. Okay. Groovy have our finest hospitality at least of the hospitality that is enjoyed by prisoners in my bed. there's a big old asterisk on that but yes with within yeah. within that range all Ooh, the comforts can, of dungeon i can pass absolute tribal authority bro yes let's yeah dude my vassals will not like it but you know what i'm gonna be dead soon anyway so <laughs> we can oh i can pass people. high tribal authority that might be a better use of my prestige than an ill-advised war. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I mean, you'll have to, to get it to four to settle anyway. It won't let you settle as feudal by itself. Right, right. But it is a necessary step. Sway, Estonian culture. A commoner of Estonian heritage has been accosted in the streets of Holmgarther over some minor offense. By making a statement in their defense, I could perhaps convince my liege, King... We haven't actually tried pronouncing this guy yet. King Kirpel... Kirpel... Pelg. Kirpelg. Yeah? No? Not even let's, close. Uh, let's, let's pause this real quick while I try to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, there's another of those Ukunusko names that I just don't have a... <laughs> A clue about it ain't um, just me <laughs> yeah no i think your 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 guess was probably pretty close Hurepelg. so he is equally estonian this might convince him of my good character but i may risk alienating my norse peers all both of them um <laughs> no not my norse peers so i have to spend so he i, I get 10 opinion i have to spend 75 prestige Or I can gain, I can be a, a Norse chauvinist and gain 75 prestige, which, boy, that prestige is handy. Mm -hmm. And I am constantly trying to think of reasons to kill this guy. Um, <laughs> plus, I'll gain 10 stress because I'm arrogant if I try to, if I try to smooth it over. Well, yeah. What do you do tonight, Jarl? <laughs> The same thing we do every night. <laughs> Try to think of okay, um, yeah, okay. You know what? Norse, Norse all the way. Hooray for, hooray for the Norse. Um, oh, another thing. The visit. 
So this is also a swaying thing. I'm uh, I'm passing mm. through uh, 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 Pikova, the capital of my liege, uh, my liege, the, the, my liege's capital, as it is what it sort of means. <laughs> when I receive it, it's a weird, it's weird. That's not just me. That's weird syntax in the game. <laughs> yeah. When I receive an invitation to visit his castle, as I arrive, he welcomes me with a frown and a tour. <laughs> it's quite a combination. <laughs> One thing that strikes me is that the place is full of unfinished projects. So I could stay for a while. We don't know what happens. Or I could say, just show me to my room and lose 10 stress. I think my stress is still pretty under control. So I will see what happens yeah, here. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what's up for now. Start the right. clock. I think maybe Biarmia is in another war. Oh yeah? Yes, they are. They are also at war against Ustiog. Uh, which is helping me because they're yeah. being drawn off. So here's what happened with my visit. A library where the books are stacked in corners, unfinished building project all over the place. Most notably, a whole dining hall and a chest of gold just standing in the middle of the hallway. King Kudrapelg's castle is a mess. Okay, uh, so what can I do? I think I can help out with the dining hall. Um, <laughs> success, nothing happens. Failure, nothing happens. Um, Hillary. Okay, so, so this, is, this is not that nothing will happen. This is that the results are opaque, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, this is a learning challenge. How's my learning? Well, you get the, the percentage breakdowns. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 75, 24, so. 65, 34. That's a diplomacy challenge. And the first one was a stewardship challenge, which I think was a 79% positive. Outcome. Yeah, so that's that's the, the best role, but not crazily yeah. better than this one. Right. I do enjoy the books, the poor books. <laughs> that is a good, good line. <laughs> that chest of gold is very unguarded. <laughs> it's also pretty good. Very unguarded is an extremely good turn of phrase. Um, <laughs> I think I'll just play the percentages here because they're all, I mean, none of these are bad things. By my lights right right theoretically if he's going to be pleased by any of them he'd be pleased by all of them yeah okay dining hall it is Let's see. okay despite all my efforts oh no <laughs> in king uh Kodopolk's dining hall uh, it seems to be in a worse state than than it, oh man this might not be going great, but there are other areas where I can help out. All right, let's try the books. Those poor, poor <laughs> the books. poor books. Won't someone please think of the books? Constantly. Yeah, same. Hard same. One thing I have learned about high school students is that they are death upon books. <laughs> yeah, like, like sent from hell to punish books, <laughs> deserving yeah. and not. Uh, okay, bound books, loose documents, decorated spines. After a lot of reshuffling, there is finally some semblance of order in the chaos that is King Krobelg's library. Things are looking good, and there are other areas I can still help out with. Okay, so I get to try all of these. Uh, so let me try this diplomacy challenge then. That chest of gold, which is very unguarded. Okay. I'm reminded of uh, the, the very beginning years ago of uh, the, the webcomic Goblins. Like, no, it is our sacred and sworn duty to protect the poorly locked chest. <laughs> As I explain the risks of keeping a chest of gold out in the open, <laughs> King Kuro Pilg's eyes widen in realization. Oh, of course it shouldn't be out there. Thank you, Jarl Helgi. I have done all in my power to help him. <laughs> I like that he's like just, oh. oh, smacks his forehead. That's what I was doing. You lock the chest. It makes so much sense when you say it. Uh, he is trusting. Maybe that's what that is. I don't know. I... <laughs> it could be, I guess. Uh, okay, now that's it's time for bed. Funny. It's been a long day, apparently. That was all, I guess, <laughs> one in-game, you know, day or week or something. Yeah. Okay. You were just uh, rushing and rushing and rushing around. <laughs> it's a well-made play. We never, the actors <laughs> never leave the stage. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, siege man. is wrapping up. Oops, wrong, wrong, wrong. No, 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 no. Crap. We're stopped at the moment. Give me one sec. I just I'm finishing my visit. Okay. So I spot I King Kudopelg. Oh, you did a bad thing. So the pause is very appreciated. Okay, good. We'll, so well, let's let's talk about what went wrong. But first, I spot King Kudopelg by the entrance, waiting to see me off in the morning. 
As I walk up, I hear him muttering to himself, he really fixed the place up, but he ruined my dining hall. <clears throat> After a quick goodbye, I am soon on the road back home again. Uh, I'm glad I was able to help. Okay, so I got I got the 10 opinion. He's grateful. A little, yeah. That's a little a, bit of a, of a bump. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to unpause. What's going on with you? <laughs> so I was about to finish up a siege and issued the move order before it actually finished. Uh, so being paused was good because it let me cancel that order before the siege actually ended. Mm. And I had to start over. So I have five days left of siege and then I have to go try and keep a worryingly large Bjarmian force from sieging back what I had taken. I wish you all the luck. I I appreciate it. I might need all of it, but we will see. Decent track record. Siege 1. Nice. To the, oh, this is a great letter. Um, this is this is uh, from Vidunia. Uh, to the brave Jarl Helgi, your broad shoulders are like a furry cat. I would be <laughs> blessed if I could hear your voice again, that I may know if you're as thin as you look from afar. Stop resisting. <laughs> you will be mine. These lines are but a bleak reflection of my feelings for you. I will do anything to prove my loyal affections. So I wanted to sway her because I wanted my Vidunia to like me, but this was not the intended outcome. Um, She's really terrible at this. <laughs> can you bring up her character sheet, please? You bet your boots I can. <laughs> She's even okay at diplomacy, which is usually what is the, the skill being tested if you're trying to express yourself well. She's, like, fine at it. <laughs> Why is she so bad at love letters? <laughs> I mean, it's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I've They're never in real life had anyone like tell me that I have cat. broad shoulders like a furry cat, so I, I can't honestly say that I know what my reaction would be. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've i never heard shoulders compared to a furry cat, even if they were hairy shoulders. I, I it seems the furriness of a cat is not especially relevant to the broadness of... Yeah, it's not, not germane. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I myself do not have particularly broad shoulders, but I did have a friend who was living abroad for a while uh, who was once complimented by a, uh, a, a female acquaintance of his on his American shoulders. <laughs> I I mean, if, if broadness and furriness were sliders, I'd probably be dead center for both on shoulders, mm. <laughs> I suppose. I... <laughs> this may be... Uh, this may be taking it from funny into sad, uh, but I would be, you know, a zero to a hundred uh, broad shoulder slider. I would be at about ten, <laughs> uh, and on furriness, I would be at exactly one. I have one really persistent shoulder hair, and no others. <laughs> I wish I was making that up as a as a joke, but I am not. That's pretty funny, actually, <laughs> though. Uh. Um. Okay, so so if I if I res- <laughs> if I say that I find this flattering, which does kind of seem in character, if I'm perfectly honest, <laughs> I mean, given how things are going with your wife, <laughs> yeah, she will attempt to win my heart. Um, I mean, look, how many years do I have left? <laughs> uh, sure, have at it. It's going to be narratively interesting, if nothing else. Like, if we just get one more letter like that, then it was absolutely worth it. That's fair. I. Uh... There is a, a skill in the whole of body tree that tells you, gives you a, a an event that pops up to let you know when you're going to die in a year. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's actually pretty useful, too, because you'd be like, ah, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. What do I got to do? Yeah, no, that's, that, so, I mean, like, that's, that's like the premise of, like, a high concept, you know, family comedy. <laughs> like, I know I have right. exactly a year left. What am I going to do with it? Maybe not a comedy. One of those weepy dramedies. Um, okay, I'm good to go when you are. I think we both unpaused and therefore we We paused. Yeah. Okay. Double negative. But really, more a double pause attempt. I knew. I do know all about that since I have shoulders like a furry cat. So (laughs) I keep a very positive attitude. (laughs) One of the most fun things about puns and wordplay is the fluid meanings of the things that you invent. Indeed. Oh, King Curlipoke Boy. has gained 25 opinion of me. That's cool. Just want to give me the kingdom? That would save us both a lot of trouble. Uh, so, 
to the serene Helgi. Oh yeah, I, I got I married off my uh my grand my grandson granddaughter some grand person it was grand <laughs> a real grand occasion so now I'm basically just camping out waiting to see if they're gonna run out of supply first or I am <laughs> uh, I I have extremely good news which is that uh, we have a second love letter oh. to, to the winsome Jarl Helgi your fearlessness is what gives meaning to my life I would be blessed if I could go adventuring with you that I may know true joy. You put Apollo to shame. That was a market improvement from a pr- from a, it was. a writing perspective. It really was. Well, and like, I just... <laughs> I love that we are getting procedurally generated love letters that are supposed to be from a human character in the game, but which, of course, are put together by the, you know fill in the blank logic of the game's code it's pretty sublime i would love to know more about how this works under the hood i assume it's like they just have a big pool of lines and then it rolls that with some modifier for for like you were saying the traits or the or the stats yeah 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 i feel um, like the the traits and stats of the recipient and of the uh sender probably play in although i imagine it's not very tightly controlled it's probably just yeah, like yeah you know here's the venn diagram now pick one at random right right okay well i'm going to choose uh that Jarl helgi is inordinately pleased with this um because <laughs> you know i mean why wouldn't he be yeah okay take that apollo <laughs> i'm sorry are we sticking it to apollo with that <laughs> Well, she said oh, I put Apollo to shame. I, this, she said, oh, I, okay. yeah, yeah. I, uh, I remembered the the comparison, but I guess I didn't remember the fact that you were shaming him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't have to. My very, my, the very cat-like qualities of my person just, just put him to shame, regardless of whether I mean to or not. All right. I finally, I've gotten carefree, so my stress gain is down by a fifth now. A uh, little, little late, honestly. <laughs> Uh, for poor Patri, but yeah, you know, and yet, and yet. All right, let's see. Let's see. That's all I've got. <laughs> um, if I hang out until their movement is locked, maybe I can beat them to Onaga and win this war. I'm pausing. Oh, just kidding. Greetings, my liege. I am serving as your chan- or in serving as your chancellor. I have learned much about manners and etiquette. I am willing to tutor you in these topics in order to gain your favor. Well, I'm glad that he is just real forthright. Yeah, that's a nice change. Uh, yeah, he is better at it than me. Um, though my chances of actually gaining any diplomacy from his tutelage are slim to none. Um, ah, my diplomacy is actually good enough that I can say we can both benefit if we pool our knowledge together and oh, that's cool. both try to improve. Oh, it's my learning. I, I'm trading learning for diplomacy, essentially. He gains learning, I gain diplomacy if all goes well. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Who loses? And apparently I got my 16% chance and uh, improved, so... That's great. That's really great. I'm so happy for us. On <laughs> Love that for you. All right. Now my hope is is that by the time they get turned around and can come back and do the siege again, I will already be far enough toward their capital that it will not make much difference. I have an event here called My Last Chance. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Stanislawa has dedicated, has decided rather, that her time in Holm Garther has come to an end. The servants have packed her chests, and she has said her farewells. With Stanislawa, uh, Stanislava, what I said would be a va, right? Uh, Stanislava, okay. With her goes her claim to the chiefdom of Radom. If I want to press it and make her my vassal, this is my last chance to make her stay. If it wasn't in Poland, I feel like that would be a real good tactic, <laughs> but yeah it's not nearby it's really not you know if you were the king of all russia you know yeah 
then e- even if it was a little ways away, it might be worth it. You know, you would have the resources to spare, but yeah. All right. Just you, you have a, have a lovely life. Okay. Here we go. It's been nice having your elaborate braids at my court. <laughs> <laughs> your elaborate braids have enlivened the very, the very air around us made it, made it all electric. Uh, marriage proposals. Great. Yet another Rurik is about to, about to father some additional Ruriks. <laughs> you have a big acapella group, the Ruriksons. <laughs> My Jarl, you are currently in possession of something, some place that should be mine. My witless chancellor, Chief De, Chief De Serafima, has come before me, insisting that I grant him the chieftain of Belozero. Huh. You should receive what you ask. I get a weak hook against him against 70 stress because I'm arrogant and greedy. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> same 70 stress, but he gains two opinion of me. Or I say, you know, go pound sand. <laughs> Um, I feel like a weak hook is not worth losing that. Plus the stress. That's a lot of stress, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking no. I feel like the opinion can just be low, and if they want to rebel, then great, you can throw them in jail when we win it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Not to be complacent, but I feel like we could probably combine our strengths to crush a rebellion. Yeah, yeah. That feels within our... Uh, our abilities entirely doable child of my right. dynasty my daughter-in-law Venamo has given birth to another daughter uh, or I guess the son, it was a son last time right since the little one is part of the Rurikid dynasty should be blessed with a good name um, name after a family member hmm. I mean I could go full George Foreman and start just naming everyone Rurik <laughs> That would get confusing to listen to and or watch. <laughs> Daughters, sons. <laughs> oh, God. Is this Rurik a Rurikson or a Rurik's daughter? <laughs> Rurik, Rurik's daughter. Um, girly. Edla. I kind of like Edla. Edla's a cool name. Let's Edla's do that. pretty good. May you grow strong and yeah. wise. Edla. All right, I am currently sieging the Bjarmian capital. So hopefully that comes out all right. I wish you all the luck. Happened. (laughs) That's the second time this has happened where an event has popped up and before the text could render, it just went away. Oh, weird. So I don't know what's happening behind the scenes in my kingdom, but I'm hoping it's nothing too dire. I'm sure it's fine. I'm pausing. I literally, before this evening, I've never had that happen before. I have suffered some attrition, but I think that's brought me down below the threshold where I can actually start gaining supplies again. Bank. And the supply in this area is 2940. Guess we'll find out. Um, anyway, my queen is pregnant. Oh, Mazel. Uh, yeah, it's my queen. She's still wounded. Where is my physician? <laughs> yeah, what happened? She's been wounded for like years. How has she not either gotten better or died of an infection? <laughs> <laughs> like... All right, let's see. I'm going to... Uh, there's a river there, isn't there? Nope, too much. There it is. All right. Split my forces in hopes of limiting my attrition. Unpause. Real quick. Um, I have a claim on Vologda, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering if I should press it in, in these my twilight years. Um, vastly inferior to me militarily. Yeah, even with their allies, they have about 1310. 
What have you got? 2,900? Seems very doable to me, and I don't have any immediate threats. There's a couple of unruly peasant rabble faction mabobs, but that's never been a big problem. Right. Um, What about Lubim? Can you do anything about them? Uh, that's a good question. You ask good questions. The ruler has an excellent beard, so that, that puts me on the back foot. Um. Mm. Well, so subjugation would be a little bit of a waste of prestige, I think. Mm -hmm. You could probably just conquer county, right? That would be yeah. cheaper prestige-wise and get you the same territory. Vastly cheaper prestige-wise. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And you can hold it personally, give it out to whoever you want. You don't have to have this guy as your vassal. So you could <clears throat> declare this war, uh, which you could steamroll. He's got 556 troops, even with all his allies and declare the war to press your claim on Vologda at the same time, it is risky because now you're fighting two armies, but they won't be coordinating necessarily. Would there be any huge advantage to that versus doing one and then immediately doing the other? Only uh, that you have to put your levies down before you can declare a second war. I see. So, so it'd be marching to twice. Big army together and roll over them then you know you could just raise your levies the once and you know get all the way out into the you know siberian wasteland there uh and you know uh not have any more borders on your extreme east um but it's three counties it's what um we say about 1800 troops total between the two of them mm -hmm. um yeah it, you know your choice to make for sure well this for sure <clears throat> excuse me i am hoping to conquer biarmia in the next six months but we shall see. Abby came to see me. Oh, hi, Abby. Having a normal one? Abby. <laughs> Abby says hello to everybody who may uh, be watching the stream or hearing this in the archive, but also she says something probably akin to why are you ignoring your father? <laughs> <laughs> father, please, at once. So. That is Violet's voice. Violet sounds like... Excuse me, excuse me. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Pardon me. And uh, our, our mutual uh, acquaintance from our, our master's program days, uh, Heron Martin Singerman. Uh, Singerman Martin? Probably just Martin now. Uh, is the only one who could properly ever do Abby's voice. Uh, I've had the pleasure but, of hearing uh, her do so on a few occasions. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's let's advance the clock. Let's do this thing, and after after we wrap our respective wars, that may be it for this session. If that uh, if that suits you, yeah, that suits. Uh, I will be one Biarmia richer should that all pan out. So <laughs> here's open. Here's open. Let's see how my attrition goes. I really thought that once I got to the barony of Onega. I would not have those problems anymore, but it appears that I'm just not resupplying, like, at all, and I don't really know why. That's weird. Yeah, the supply limits really should be favoring me at this point, according to the numbers, but maybe I'm just missing something. The gift of generosity. My daughter Ralha has been impressed with one of the household champions for a very long time. After finally meeting in person, she has been repeating the warrior's words to herself. Give others their due, and you will receive your own in turn. And even if I wanted to make her diligent instead of generous, or patient instead of generous, the stress would send me critical, so she just gets to be generous. Congratulations. Groovy. I can create the Duchy of Karelia. Ooh. Did somebody conquer? Oh. Oh. Your king conquered uh, the other Onega, the one that I'm going to need back. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that, this, yeah, this is a recent development. Yeah. yeah. But uh, do I have the money for it? If so, I definitely need to go ahead and do that. 
do have the money for it. It's not a usurpation, so it's cheaper. And it gives me 300 prestige. Hell yeah. Cool. Now I have the very seemly two Jarldoms uh, for a, uh, a king. Uh, that is the, the correct amount for a king to have. It is. It's like credit cards. You want, you know. Just just one means that you're leaning on it too heavily. More than more than two means perhaps you're running a hustle and you may outsmart yourself too. Perfect. <laughs> I was worried when you started that because I was like, oh shit, do I have the wrong number of credit cards? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, I to know? there's a million tricks from like a bullshit credit score, you know, standpoint. But, oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. I was just talking silly dating stereotypes. Yeah, yeah uh that is that is funny though <laughs> all right well i am not amazingly thrilled with how my supply lines have decided to just kind of not work uh this time but uh whatever uh we'll see how it goes and if i get run out of town then we maybe just don't finish this war tonight yeah that's fair unpausing we've never done a cliffhanger mid-war so i mean i'm not i'm not 100 percent against the idea yeah whoops Oh, well, I've managed to have another mental break. It's gone too long uh, in stress critical level one. Dark thoughts. Guilt and shame have been plaguing me as of late. All my sins, my flaws, my failings, these dark thoughts distract me from my responsibilities and keep me awake at night. I feel like I must do something to put an end to this mental anguish. What could possibly help? Donating to charity will make up for my sins, which would lose me 75 gold, but uh, also lose me 42 stress maybe a couple drinks will help could mm. become a drunkard uh, and that's something I love about this game or... by the way where just there's a become a drunkard button like it's I mean like, right. like obviously people <laughs> do kind of make that choice in real life but not really like in those terms explicitly <laughs> like, right it's not like you're just going like oh what's this you know like the the two buttons sweating over the choice. Yeah, game, exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly. Give to charity, become a drunkard. <laughs> yeah, uh, or I must be strong and resist these impulses, which brings me further into the red. So I guess I'm going to donate to charity. It doesn't make me uh, improvident uh, this time, so that's good. Uh, I guess that's because I'm already profligate. Oh, that <laughs> makes sense. I have both. Uh, so, yeah, I suppose let's see how this goes. I'm pausing. It still hasn't brought me below stress critical, but I am closer Oop. to oh, where geez. I'd like to be. There it is. Oh, geez. Oh, so many things are happening. Hang on. <laughs> I paused it for us. You're good. <sighs> Stop me when this sounds familiar. My wife, High Chief, just from a sec, is once again <laughs> absent from our chambers as night falls. She has been distant lately, lost in thought, and rarely seen at court. Am I not to her satisfaction? Is she simply busy? I love the idea that this guy is having these same the same series of thoughts over and over and over. Um, I can confront her about it. I can start the secret finding at court. I can ignore it. Um, I mean, I've confronted her before, and it's just made her like me less briefly. Um that whole finding secrets thing there is again the not too small matter of the whole which sitch um <laughs> uh my my poor stupid brain heard which sitch and went which sitch woohoo <laughs> We are solving some mysteries and rewriting history, so. Um, I mean, and I would absolutely watch a cartoon called Witch Sitch. I, I think <laughs> that sounds delightful. Um, sure, let's root out secrets at court. I was going to say what's the worst that could happen. I kind of know. Uh, okay. Oh, so I've also been invited uh, to the implacable Helgi. I call on you to honor our alliance and join me in the independence war. New Jarldom, who dis? Uh, Chieftess, <laughs> Chieftess Yaroslava of Siminovna of Kursk. Kursk. Rather, yeah. Uh, where, where is Kursk, actually? You're asking good questions. Good so question. against the king of Estonia, who was, was sort of on my shit list anyway. Um... <laughs> Uh, 
So when she spends 150 prestige, I don't get that 150 prestige. She's just spending it to call on me. Is that right? Right. You can gain prestige from coming in and contributing as an ally uh, in a war. Like, you know, coming to someone else's aid when called is prestigious, but it will depend on your contribution to that war. I see. Oh, let's do it. (laughs) What's the worst that can happen? (laughs) It's not like I'm currently already fighting a different war or anything. So let's wrap this war up quickly and go on to the independence (laughs) war. That's going to be the plan here. Merge armies. Well, she... She's not actually in Estonia. I think Estonia is maybe an ally of White Rus. Yeah. I don't exactly know what's going on. I'll figure but that it's out. It's complicated. Yeah. I got to it's it's complicated. <laughs> it's, that's, the, that's the status, yeah, of this war. <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. So independence No longer war. friends with White Rus. <laughs> Best friend is now Finland. <laughs> So High Chieftain, so the real, the person we're sort of targeting is High Chieftain uh, Mikikor of uh, Opelier. I'm, I'm, Mm. hmm. yeah, okay. Well, we're going to be in a, we're going to be closer to where we need to be and we'll have a victory under our belt in just a moment. So let's, let's advance the clock and let us either. This is going to be a very successful latter part of uh, of my dude's life or uh, or disaster is about to strike either way it'll be fun to watch i think it's your pause oh no anyone can pause simple. yeah sorry no it's all good uh, i was inattentive but not disastrously so all right i got a month left in my siege please let this get me high enough please let this get me high enough Not as far as I would have wanted, honestly. Are we restocking now? Can we please get more supplies? Why am I not supplying? Oh, that weird shifty spy guy died in my dungeons. <laughs> I like weird shifty spy guy as a designation. That's, uh, that's <laughs> you remember that guy. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Shifty McSpy Weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy? Oh, funny story. Died in my dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm saying oh, it, it's not a very funny story, actually. Yeah. All right, well, I do have their capital, which probably is helping, but I am trying to figure out the best thing for me to do. I'm trying to get some more supplies, which should start happening. <laughs> And I'm going to go try and keep them from sieging back Vienna, no, not that one. But I think I've got two more sieges before the war ends, so it may or may not be accomplishable in the scope of this episode. You will have to tell me. Fair enough. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to go siege break. I think that makes the most sense. Unpause it. Actually, pause one more sec if you wouldn't mind. Oop. Because I got two things happening. I'm hiring some mercenaries since I'm rich and I'm now fighting two wars. Um, And also there's a camp dispute. After my army sets up camp, I hear a commotion coming from my champion's lodgings. Investigating the disturbance, I find Bengt uh, and Tralder in the middle of a heated argument while several onlookers edge them on. So I can give a speech about unity to the crowd. Now is a time for unity and healing. I have a better uh, than even chance of fucking that up, however. Um, I can have them whipped for their delinquency. I gain some dread. They don't like me very much and they're both wounded since they're my champions. That seems potentially like a terrible idea. Or I can just fuck off. Um, <laughs> I, pro- I need to take the coin flip. There's really nothing more. Nothing. Well, especially since one of the results is that everybody joins. Here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just becomes a brawl. I get up and deliver a speech about how we are all fighting for the high chiefdom of Luki. Yeah, uh, and how we must stand united against our foes, for if we don't, there are many outsiders who would take advantage of our internal squabbles to seize our lands and impose their rule upon us, yada, yada, yada. Looking abashed, Bengt and Heralder apologize and get ready to settle in for the night. We are stronger when we stand together. Good stuff. Okay. <laughs> this was really the day that <laughs> Jarl Helgi became <laughs> Jarl. <laughs> Thanks for that. I made myself sad, so I'm glad it was worth it. (laughs) Uh. 
Okay. I do not have a handle on this war at all. Um, so let's see. Well, the good news is, is that you don't have to contribute to any particular part of it. Sure. You, you could just focus in on your war and then optionally until somebody starts sieging your stuff, you can just, you know, decide your moves. Yeah. Okay. Let's just advance time and I'll see how this plays out. A sound plan or a plan. <laughs> it is at the very least a plan. I'm pausing. Nope. <laughs> God damn. Like the man said. Are we reinforcing here or are we just resupplying? We're just resupplying. But, you know, resupplying is good. And we are reinforcing kind of our men at arms. A momentary pause for military maneuvering of the highest order. Yes. Uh, by which I mean just kind of gather in some folks fortunately i <clears throat> am currently supplied they currently are not so i will have to split my troops back up if i want to remain supplied but uh it will give me an advantage in this fight at least unpause hold on one sec actually don't don't yep. pause just yet <laughs> <laughs> you just you kidding. just you just hold your dang horses. It's a trick I like to play sometimes where I fake like I'm unpausing. Classic. Oh, I'm taking this opportunity to check my notifications on my phone and see if there's any news about school because we are having winter weather currently. And it would be my highest wish that tomorrow our plans have to change because we are doing some really boneheaded inter-campus stuff that I think is a very bad idea. Woof. Okay. I think I have my various wars more or less under control. Okay. So at the moment, no changes, but if Rhodes form ice is predicted, school closure is likely. The final decision will be made by 6 a.m. Fingers and toes crossed for you. I will be awake. <laughs> I feel bad rooting for a school closure because the 10th grade religion teacher has put a lot of effort into making the Mardi Gras stuff happen this year. But also, it shouldn't because yeah. of the plague. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a pretty good know. reason for it not to happen. I This is neither here nor there, but I, I, I picked up some some delicious burgers from a local place for, for me and Lauren yesterday, totally forgetting it was Valentine's Day. We were just hungry and wanted burgers. And the restaurant mm -hmm. I was picking it up from, you know, getting takeout, like a, re a reasonable human during lockdown, this restaurant was right. packed, like just, just oh like to the gills, people waiting out the door, like just what is wrong with people? <laughs> like it made me very sad. Well, I can say that the only restaurant I've been inside of recently is the uh, Five Guys and the Jason's Deli around here uh, for takeout. Um, and they are all but deserted. There's a line of people like, you know, waiting to order or get their stuff, but it's spaced out for the most part. People don't necessarily wear their masks over their noses, which, you know, which I had like a little spray bottle I could just squirt them with to remind them. <laughs> sure. Um, but, uh, you know... Uh, they don't they have tables blocked off and even the ones that aren't blocked off aren't occupied so you know take that for what it's worth i'm sure that if i went out to east chase and like to the you know um oh there's a sports bar that just opened out there i don't remember exactly what it's called but i'm sure i would be disappointed oh yeah that's this yeah, place's right. deal, I think. It's got that kind of like, you know, there are TVs on the walls and there's a big long bar and right, whatever. It's right, got right. that kind of that, that aspect. I'm sure that's what what brings people out. And it's uh, it's just a bummer. Let's do something chill like the like a war. Walk ons. That was the same. Yeah, let's 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 do a war. Yes, yeah, a daughter. Good deal. I don't care what your name is. <laughs> I could say I cared, but it would be a lie. <laughs> oh, I am going to smash them. Hell yes. Hold on, I'm pausing real quick here. Yeah, yeah, me too. Oh, that was great. I got my war score very close to a victory. Nice. Uh, 
I may be able to wrap this whore up this session. Who knew? My spy master discovered no secrets at court. <laughs> How am I not surprised? <laughs> you know what? Bang up job. No more no more discovery necessary. Let's all let's all go to Popeyes, everybody. a while since i had popeyes uh their chicken sandwiches were a big deal down here and i did finally manage to get one uh some months ago and they're good but something in the sauce i think really disagreed with me Ooh, that's not good uh, so you have a visceral yeah. aversion to doing so again you know i honestly would eat another one <laughs> you know, just have to make sure that i didn't have to you know go to work or anything sure sure yeah <laughs> I, I would do it again <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, like, I'm sure that whoever owns Popeyes doesn't have great politics, but they're also not Chick Fil A, so you know. yeah. There's a, there's an Aristotelian range of virtues and vices to, to be considered here. There's no ethical consumption <laughs> under capitalism, but there is certainly particularly unethical consumption under capitalism. I didn't respond yeah, to this, by I the way. Lucas that's... said we're on a good run, which I think we are. I, th I think things have yeah. gone well this time. Knock on all avail all available wood. <laughs> right, right. I'm gonna call a hunt while I'm thinking about it because that'll help reduce my stress for oh, good a man. ton of money. Um, but yeah, well, Chick Fil A is real big around here, mm -hmm. and like I don't know, it's tasty enough chicken. But they also are just not only, you know, in favor of some really terrible stuff, but also just like huge dicks about it. Yeah, no, totally. It's not just that they they spend their revenue on on making the world worse, but they're they're so arch about that fact. It's mm -hmm. it's rough. It's 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 like Hobby Lobby levels, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's as far as I know, they haven't trafficked any stolen artifacts, <laughs> but that's I think the only distinction. My favorite uh, tweet, and, and I wish I could remember who tweeted it so I could give credit, but uh, my favorite tweet I have ever seen on Twitter was Hobby Lobby's Robbie Hobby, Hammurabi. <laughs> I did see that one. It's very good. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I both advertise heavily with their christian identity and you know make a big deal out of the um you know sort of above and beyond things that they do for their hourly employees which like you won't find me coming down on them for but it just does make them kind of intolerable like you know it's very holier than thou attitude yeah yeah uh you know well we're closed on sundays yeah yeah but your your employees still work right <laughs> like yeah, I mean, in and out Burger yeah. in, uh, in in California in the Southwest, they you know they are they're like there are Bible verses and all the cups and whatever, but but it you oh know God. they don't they don't but they're they're like they're hidden right like they're they're like under the cut like in the ring under the the you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about the little rim, like it's you could easily yeah. miss it and whatever, um, but they just you know they, it's on the level of they they treat their employees well and they you know if you drop your change people are expected to pick it up and whatever like like hopefully not in a pandemic right. but in general right they they don't feel right. the need to to claim their waging holy war with their burgers <laughs> so far as i'm aware right. yeah yeah there's a newer place i think based in north carolina that's opened up around here called the cookout that has very cheap very unhealthy but very tasty food that i've been leery about going back to because i noticed that all of their packaging has some pretty choice uh scriptures on it uh, cookout is an interesting case so my uh, my buddy who's a doctor uh when he was living in winston-salem going to going to college uh ate a mm. we got a little bit obsessed with cookout and i guess like they don't have an official website like the the closest thing is like yeah, a facebook right. page like the the ownership is somewhat under question that there's like they're like shrouded mm. in mystery <laughs> in a way that is both compelling and disconcerting yeah yeah they have great cheese bites mm. uh, that sound good and uh and a really unreliable wait time. <laughs> <laughs> they have like crazy milkshake flavors too, right? They have like watermelon milkshakes and stuff, if I recall. Uh, I think so. That sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you? I'm good. Yeah. To advance anything. time. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Fighting a war on two fronts like a big arrogant jerk, and it's actually going pretty well. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about the whole. Uh, you know nordic aryan thing is is that there's kind of nothing there <laughs> like, <laughs> sure it's pretty much just madame blavatsky made it up and so it's a thing yeah no totally <laughs>
I am um, the best description of that. Whole, I mean, like this is this is more specifically like when people talk about white culture or whatever, which is a nonsensical uh-huh. concept in a million ways. But I think I've talked about this book before. Um, Neo reaction of ba- uh, basilisk, which is like one of my favorite works of modern mm-hmm. philosophy mm-hmm. by an author named Elizabeth Sandifer, talks about how like when 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 people who are invested in the idea of white culture talk about a Jewish conspiracy, that would have to mean that white culture was cucked from the beginning, right? Like there was right. never a point. It was never anything but ruins. <laughs> like it was, yeah. things have never been good, <laughs> which is okay. I mean, like it's a hell of a posture to, you know, forge your identity around. Right. Well, and it's the thing that, that reactionism, if that's a thing, closes its eyes to, right? Because it's not hard to see that reactionaries in every era of European culture and its descendants have always been like, things are terrible now, but they used to be better if only we could go back. Right. You know, right. uh, and you can't find a single second, you know, since the written word started being used in that way, where that hasn't been the case. Completely. I mean, was it Plato that thought that uh, the written word was going to screw everything up? Yeah. That's Socrates, yeah. according to Plato, I think, right? Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's, that's that's the thing. But yeah, like I um, and so if there is anything to your position, then there has never been anything to your position <laughs> um, it's extremely well said yeah so i have an event okay hunt illegal prey poachers here in the chieftain's woods they huddle together as i ride up with my guards making a poor job of hiding a dead, dead stag behind them hmm. we did not do this your mercy their blades and bows belie their words <laughs> so i can they will hang and their villages will, will pay I would gain punished poachers, which increases my taxes, but lowers popular opinion. I could say, you all seem to be excellent bowmen, which gives me poacher training for plus 10 years. Uh, And I would get plus two prowess during that time. Or I could say, this animal is mine along with fines for their lives, which is a stewardship challenge. Hmm. That could give me 15 gold and 150 prestige, or could much more likely cost me some popular opinion and some prestige so i think i'm just gonna take the prowess take the prowess and run yeah i like it so to speak on pausing here we go i got two months left in this siege this independence war i got roped into is also going all right i'm suffering more attrition than i would ideally like but it's not crazy that is certainly better than crazy attrition. I am not regaining supplies as I had hoped. That is maybe not surprising, considering that the retreating army that I just beat is following my same path. Hunt. Returning from the wild. The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses and leave the taiga behind as the servants prepare the stag and other game for the journey back. In spite of our difficulties along the way, the hunt went very well. I gain 150 prestige and the hunt ends. And I did lose some stress but i am now at an even 100 so i'm still <laughs> so it one. didn't it didn't strictly speaking do you any immediate good yeah yeah but hopefully if i just like if i could just catch like a nap this afternoon honestly i think that would do it <laughs> just one stress yeah it's only a whiff of <laughs> it's a whiff of, uh, good and possibly um king cheek <laughs> king cheekbones just won a war by the way uh. um <laughs> Cheekbones. What if that's what his name meant? <laughs> I would love that. I would love that more than words could possibly convey. It's impossible that that's true, but it would be amazing. Is it impossible? Let me hang on to this a little. Okay, let's go. Let's unpause. <laughs> I'm pausing. Uh, and you may want to bump the speed back. Oh, good call. Yeah, we went back to got two pips. Uh, yeah, it has adjusted for my not amazingly great garden district connection. That's fair. Uh, once again. Yeah, we're on fiber here, but, you know, there's a lot of other factors. <laughs> right. Let me also split my armies now. How many do I need to siege here? 300? <laughs> I can do that. What's our... Okay. Um, I'll stand still for a second while I split off another army here. Uh... That seems doable. Okay. Man. So I might wrap this up before, but it's possible I'm going to have three wars at once here because there's a peasant rabble that is powerful oh. enough that they'll be sending an ultimatum soon. Um, I'm not too worried, but 
It's not ideal. Yeah, it's just another front is not amazing, even if one of the wars you can kind of ignore for the most part. Um, all right, unpausing, and hopefully my split in my forces has come in a timely enough manner to preserve me from supply starvation. Pause real quick because it looks like I can, in fact, wrap up my stupid war. <laughs> the TLC reality show. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> oh, I, I'm especially ra I'm ransoming somebody, so I I gotta do that before I can. Yeah. I'd especially watch like a mockumentary style. Um, <laughs> yeah completely like you know uh this is spinal tap uh variation on that kind of thing oh, very much so uh maybe it's uh you know about i don't know the roman attempts to conquer germania or um oh ooh, no, no no uh crassus taking on the parthians uh that would be great i'd watch the shit out of that um, the the short version for anybody at home to whom that's an unfamiliar reference uh, Crassus was arguably the wealthiest man in the Roman Empire before while it was becoming an empire and stopping to be a republic uh, he was major competition to Julius Caesar uh, and he made his money running a firefighting brigade in Rome a privatized uh, firefighting brigade that would essentially yes. extort those who had fires in progress Yes, your house was on fire. He would show up with some slaves holding buckets and say, wow, that's a great property. Too bad it's on fire. What's it worth now, do you think? Uh, if you sell it to me, I'll put the fire out. <laughs> um, and so he bought up a lot of land that way. But he needed military victories in order to be uh, politically viable in Rome. And so bought a bunch of mercenaries, rode out into the desert, and got crushed by the Parthians. <laughs> uh, Couldn't then... happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> Yeah, Julius Caesar was able to, uh, you know, found, well, create the conditions for founding the empire, destroy the Republic, and set the stage for Augustus. That was crazy that succinct, but yes, I would watch the hell out of the This Is Spinal Tap <laughs> version of that. <laughs> uh, Shall we? Yeah, yeah. I, I am hopefully prosecuting a successful siege we shall see to the loathsome helgi may your years be short and miserable <laughs> i mean too late for the former but the latter is kind <laughs> of on lockdown to be honest yeah. you are a much greater foe than i imagined in order to put an end to this bloodshed we'll comply with your demands so be it i'm above my domain limit uh so yeah if you just you know click on the one that you don't want to hold on to personally presumably the far-flung one that you just took yeah uh that has low control anyway and so isn't making you any money right now you can probably uh clicking on the the capital of it anyway where it actually says leo bim in the little blue letters or blue banner oh i see yeah yeah uh there no. should be like a uh, uh, uh. interesting uh map mode problem there there you go there's a grant to button at the bottom gotcha uh, yeah. That'll do. Um, and then that puts you back under your domain limit. Groovy. Ta -da. And Helgeson has become your vassal. Oh, I have formed an alliance with him. Because he is now a ruler. I mean, I no longer have an alliance with you. No, I do still have an alliance. Cool. I think we have both, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Things have so far not gotten so froggy that those two things are in conflict, but okay. Shall we? <laughs> oh, yeah. We shall. We shall, we shall. Am I really over the supply here? I don't think I am. I wasn't. This is going amazingly poorly over here, though, in terms of supplies. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you know, I have an army that is resupplying that can move in. Uh, so we'll just let them starve for a minute. 
guess they'll starve. To be clear, I would not do that if I thought I had another option. <laughs> but I don't really see what else I can do. I wasn't judging you too harshly. Let the record show. I was judging me pretty harshly. Where am I getting raided at? Oh. Up north. Okay. I think I have this war on lock as long as my overall supplies don't get too much more diminished. Mm -hmm. And the war that I haven't participated at all over there in the steppe is going pretty well, so that's good. Oh, the other Maybe ally just evolved. abandoned the independence war. Oh. Insufficiently devoted to the cause. We're at plus 17 war score, so like, you know, we're... We're winning, yeah. but not by a commanding amount. Leaves I am about down, to take yeah. the capital of Estonia, if all goes well, so that'll help. Yeah, it's not at issue in the war, so the degree to which it will help your war score is unclear, but it will help knock Estonia's troops out of the war. Yeah. That was, that was the best plan I had. Yeah. No, I think it's not a bad plan. Mind and body. The further I delve into my studies, the more apparent the link between mind and body becomes. Too much worry can make you sick, and the mind is no stronger than its vessel. My wise friend High Chieftain Atso journals about his worries and swears it eases his mind. I have also read about the benefits of vigorous movement to soothe frayed nerves. Oh my... Thank... Ancestors. Um, I can lose 24 stress, gaining the trait journaler. I can lose 12 stress gaining the trait athletic uh or i can take the entire day off and just lose 24 stress but i'm gonna i'm gonna become a journaler because this trait i've had it before it's plus one to learning plus 20 percent to stress loss and you gain a choice where you can take a hit to some of your stats uh to take time off for a year to keep a journal and reduce your stress and thank god well, that's good stuff. That's very good stuff. I am back on... I'm no longer stress critical for the first time in probably 10 years. The mausolist of Tavs to you. Oh, and my wife finally healed. She's scarred now instead of wounded. <laughs> I think some thing, gnarly scars. Things are looking up up there. Hold on. Let me take a look at these scars here. I mean, she's got like three slashes on oh, her wow. face that have scarred over. She is one tough looking mofo mm -hmm. nothing to fuck with that's the, that's the yeah, saying like, goes beware <laughs> uh, alright on pausing cool that was a really welcome development okay. yeah siege one war one I gained 350 fame as well as all of Biarmia, and a vassal who hates my fucking guts. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I... Uh, oh yeah, she's got some vassals, so that'll be alright. And she's a powerful vassal because she holds all of Biarmia, and she does not like me, because I declared war on her and conquered her. But, look at my territory. That's That's so nice. I'm zooming out. Wow. Look at Finland. Yeah, it's like a big deal taking Biarmia. Hey, Finland. <laughs> Look at you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home. Uh, I'm going to treat myself. Uh, and just kind of chill for a minute while I recover my treasury. <laughs> no, it's good stuff. Course, this is... Um, what were we going to say? I was going to say, of course, my next logical target here is actually the kingdom of Novgorod. So uh, I need the... Um, uh, county of Onega, and then of course Estonia is also. Uh, oh, I also need the counties of Narva and Tartu from Novgorod. Happens because they're de jure part of Estonia. Well, we're gonna have to divvy up what is quickly becoming our corner of the world. Yeah, um, I mean we're doing pretty well. I mean I know you don't hold all of Novgorod personally, but I mean like you've got a chunk of it, my dude. Luki ain't nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's well larger than the rest of Novgorod. You've got 5,000 troops compared to your king's 2,000. Now, some of those are mercenaries, so they have an expiration date. But but yes, uh, well, it's definitely, like, even even without those, I do have a fair bit more than he does. 
Well, and having enough money to hire mercenaries ain't nothing either. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's actually like I have some time left on this mercenary contract. I'm wondering if I need yeah. to do something stupid before the, <laughs> before that expires. Well, and like, you know, your um, military strength here by yourself is what? 2200 maybe? Uh, uh, 20... Nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, yeah. 29 actually oh wow yeah what's mine at now that i have the army uh 26 that ain't nothing Ooh, 42 45 by the time it all reinforces provided all my vassals actually send their whole levy which you know <laughs> legit so i so i think if i were in charge of this portion of Nov novgorod that's between us if i were vologda if i were any of these other territories i would be nervous right now because you and i have some squeezing to do uh, next time, yeah, I think. Yarmoland becomes part of the Russian Empire eventually. Uh, it's a kingdom unto itself. And I took some of it when I subjugated the independent land of Yarmia here. Uh, but they did have in their possession part of the Duchy of Karelia, uh, which I had, had just uh, created um, this session um, after the independent petty kingdom of Karelia went away. So if I get Onigad, I have all of Karelia's de jure territory, and I could stand to lose um, Povenets, Podorj, Onega, and Kargapol without that actually cutting into my de jure territory. That is all de jure part of the Russian Empire under the kingdom of Yamal. Uh, but I would need to get the other Onega. I would need to get Vodi. I would need to get... Oh, no, I have Vodi. I would need to give up Vodi. I would mm, need to get mm. Narva and Tartu and then all of De Jure Estonia, which is not... And as long as we're doing the state of the board. So I'm I'm 62 and you're 45. So, I, I mean, I, I will I will almost certainly die before you do. Um, but then again, you know, for we sure are fighting a lot I'm not worse. stressed anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but... Well, on the track to get um, health boosted perks. Totally, uh, totally. So, cool. All right. Thank well, that's that seems as good a place as any to call it. Um, yeah, this has been lovely as always. As per usual, and thanks everybody for tuning in, Lucas. I'm really glad we finally got one that timed out for you because I know you've been wanting to tune sure. into these live. So, thank you a ton for tuning in. I hope we made your work day a little bit more pleasant. Uh, with our with our ill advised wars and whatnot, um, mm -hmm. I will I will actually advance to the uh, announce I should say to the patrons who will be next on the show very soon. Um, but yeah, more streams soon. We do these you know every couple of weeks is usually how it uh, times out. I'll probably be doing some N sixty four streams, uh, some more of those finally as well pretty soon. Um, and nice. thank you as always for tuning in, everybody. Adam, thank you as always for guiding me through this game that you understand much better than I do. <laughs> thank you as always for having me. This is a uh, uh... A very good way to spend my time. I enjoy it a lot. Here, here. Uh, so long, everybody. Have a good one. Ciao.